Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. The United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. Oh boy. Oh boy. President Obama's approval ratings are so low right now that the Kenya Africans are accusing him of being born in the United States. Holy cow, it can't get much lower. Good morning, here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America, followed by a patriot with our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Thank you, Kate Smith, and good morning. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. That bell, by the way, is a bell that I've had for now, oh, goodness, seven or eight Christmases, uh, thanks to Alan Polly Butler, and I appreciate that. It's still going strong. I'm Zeb Bell, Zeb at the Ranch, with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, along with our great advertisers, some of them like Lee's Furniture Floors and more, at 459 Overland and Burley and our friends at Western Way Services always at your disposal get on the route service today call Kelly 734-6969 right now just finished feeding the reindeer and now she's making up a big bowl of porridge Mrs. Santa Claus good morning have you ever had porridge um, I've had grits. Is that the same thing? Uh, you know, I don't know. I think porridge is kind of like oatmeal or cream of wheat, one of the two, I think. Yeah, then yes, I have. Yeah, But I love grits. You just mentioned one of my favorite. I go down south a lot, and I love grits. My, my favorite's cornmeal mush. Oh, oh, I'm not going to dispute that. But yeah, I like grits a little hard. different. Maybe you don't like it this way, but I like to get a great big bowl of grits in the morning when I'm down in Texas or whatever. Uh -huh. and, and then I want to put a big pat of butter in the middle of it so it melts. Okay. And then I take brown sugar. Try maple syrup. That sounds good, too. Mm -hmm. That That's sounds good, like too. To my grits as well. Mm -hmm. That's why my Wranglers are shrinking in the closet. <laughs> You sure it's not all the Christmas cookies? <laughs> I haven't had any yet. Really? Not a one. No, Deanne hasn't made any in. Uh, I'm scared. Every time I go on a diet, Deanne loses a lot of weight. <laughs> <laughs> She's the one that's affected by you going on the diet. Yeah, really. I mean, I don't eat anything, and, like, I'll have an apple or something or a bowl of peaches, and then she's sitting there, and she looks like one of those little birds out in the wintertime in the snow. Oh, I have nowhere to go. I'm hungry. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Well, I don't think it would be quite fair for her to eat a, a ribeye steak while you're eating cardboard. There would be a newspaper story. <laughs> <laughs> there would be. There would be. Now, do we have a pleasure? Uh, me, you, or my... No, no, no. You, you always do an excellent job. Go ahead. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, that was great. Thank you very much. And right now it's time for the weather with MichaelRogersWeather.com. Brought to you by Cheney Flooring and Home Design, 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. Oh, man. Go on in there. These are the nicest people, Kyle and Whitney Cheney. And uh, they've remodeled a lot of homes, and they've got all the carpet and the flooring and the kitchen construction and the home decor and all your Christmas decorations. Wow! Whatever you need to make your house a home. At Cheney Flooring and Home Design, 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. Look for the blue door. Right now, let's look for our weatherman. Good morning, Michael. Good morning. It's going to be a yucky day for today and also for tonight. And for tomorrow, you can come out of it tomorrow night and 
Friday and Saturday, so yeah, it's looking pretty darn good. You got rain in the forecast. Now, bear in mind, while you got all the rain, everybody else is getting the snow. So this is a good thing for this El Nino year that we're going through. So rain will kick in for today, tonight. Also for tomorrow, I'll take off tomorrow night. 50s of the high, 30s of the overnight low. Weekend looks pretty darn good if you, haven't, if you happen to be coming to Vegas and you're a NASCAR fan. And this is the opportunity to meet your favorite NASCAR driver because this is championship week. I'll be on the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Flamingo watching everybody do the burnouts like they always do every year. Jimmy Johnson did it good last year. We'll see if Kevin Harvick will do it great this year. Either way, I'll have some photographs. But the weather will be down here cloudy. So either way, whether you're in Idaho or down here in Vegas, enjoy the weather. It's the only weather you got. Oh, MichaelRogersWeather.com. I envy him. That'd be fun to watch. Hey, K Cheney Flooring and Home Design, 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley with Kyle and Whitney. Cheney, look for the blue door. Cheney Flooring and Home Design. We have got a busy morning coming up. We're expecting a call from United States Senator Mike Crapo in about, uh, about 17, 18 minutes, and so we've got to gallop and get things done. Uh, calls are welcome right now, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Call or be right with you, I promise. You know the drill. Hang on. Ramsey Heating and Electric, and don't forget to get the better, better air filters for your furnace. You want to take care of your furnace. Good heavens, it takes care of you when your little toesies hit the cold floor in the morning. Well, make sure to get a, one or a package of quality air filters at Ramsey Heating and Electric. 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. 6780459. Call them. They'll have their order waiting on the counter. They're open 730 to 530 Monday through Friday where they provide warm winters and cool summers. Ramsey Heating and Electric. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Morning, Zeb. Yes. Hey, I can sing hallelujah and praise the Lord and fast ammunition. Cadges reconsiders placement for waste transfer stations. Hallelujah. Yeah, you know what? You and the people that live there are very indicative of what it means to get uh, involved in your community and let your voices be heard. I don't want to hear anybody say that uh, speaking out doesn't do anything. It does. Well, we got one hard-headed commissioner. I'm going to work on him one of these days because he's so damn hard-headed he won't listen to nothing. <laughs> but I'll work on him. <laughs> you know, I have no doubt. I have no I mean, doubt. <laughs> uh, you get the facts, but yet he thinks garbage don't stink and all that stuff. I got news for that, commissioner. You better well damn believe garbage does stink, and you're raising one of the biggest stinks around here. So pull in your horns, buddy, because I'm coming after you. Oh, my goodness. That sounds like an over threat. All right, my friend. Hey, Al, God bless you, man. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right, buddy. Thanks. Hey, the Festival of Trees, um, every year they've called on the program, and I think this year they overlooked it. Their great big um, to-do is tonight. The big gala is tonight, Wednesday, December 3rd at 6 p.m. at the Oregon Trail Recreation Center. Everybody's welcome to attend the event, and tickets are $15 each, and you can call 300 one 300-0012. That's going to be appetizers. I love that when they say appetizers. Uh, and you know, some people just put out a bowl of chips. Some people put out, you know, like bacon wrapped mushrooms and everything. It just depends. Uh, how did I get off on that? Music and silent auction, tree buying and everything at the Festival of Trees tonight. Okay. Valley Wine Home and Ranch, we are going to be over there next Thursday, December 11th. It's going to be a ripping good Christmas fun time remote. Uh, Santa Claus is going to be there that day, and we've got Ken Mort going to be singing Christmas carols. Uh, we're going to have super specials in the store. Oh, my, come on by. Valley Wide Home and Ranch, 910 South Oneida and Rupert. Sean and Mandy, the whole crew, are inviting you to come on in. We're going to be there all three hours of my program next Thursday at Valley Wide Home and Ranch. Don't you miss it. And, uh, by the way, too, well, I have just a moment, and like I said, I'm trying to gather up and hurry up this morning. I want to remind you about Barry Equipment and Rental. A lot of you folks had, that made some money this year. Come on, there were some people that had some good years this year, and uh, maybe you're trying to keep that money for yourself a little bit and need some new equipment. Well, I know where you should go. The equipment that is the best and will get the job done right is right there at Barry Equipment and Rental. Barry Equipment and Rental. Eli, Nick, the whole crew, uh, three 
three locations, Addison Avenue, West Wind Falls, South Lincoln, and Jerome, and their new one that's a dandy, right there on 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. I mean, whether you're talking about coyote tractors, or whether you're talking about bobcat loaders, or those big, tough Doosan loaders, oh my, they've got the equipment that will get the job done for you. At Barry Equipment and Rental, you stop in and see them today. All right, give me a call, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. You know, I'm going to just say this this morning uh, on race and the racial problems that we have in this country right now today. Um, it's amazing to me, uh, this area, very conservative, but yet there are some that absolutely think that the police are the bad guys and the Michael Brown, that uh, punk, a punk and a felon. Uh, basically, he's of martyr status, and that really offends me. But uh, yesterday, Jesse Jackson opened up his foul left wing mouth. I can't take that call right now. I don't know why they call me on my cell phone. And uh, made references to Ferguson, and he called the grand jury in this case a hangman's noose. You know, so many times with uh, newscasters and other people in the news over the many, many years. There has been a reference, you know, the hangman's news and how blacks feel they're not being treated right. It's just a very derogatory statement. Well, now Jesse Jackson using the terminology hangman's news and uh, saying that it was never going to be fair. It was stacked deck from the beginning. I don't believe that. You're denigrating the people in, in uh, Ferguson and the grand jury by saying all these evil things. And of all the stupidity of these hands up, don't shoot, like even on the floor of Congress yesterday, ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't get much lower than that. Three black congressional people went to the podium and stood up and put their hands in the air and said, hands up, don't shoot. There is no basis. There is no evidence. There is no facts that support the fact that Officer Wilson did anything wrong. Let me throw this at you quickly this morning and pay attention to this. Pay attention to this. Super talented college student from New Jersey driving home at about 7 o'clock at night not too many months ago pulls up to a stop sign. A black Muslim terrorist walks up to the side of the car and shoots him six times and kills him. You never hear about that story anymore. Or the knockout game. We broadcasted it here on our program many, many times about the heinous acts of these young black teens walking up to somebody on the street and pow! Hitting them, knocking them cold, and possibly could have killed them. Uh, never heard anything about that too much. How about this story, and it just happened yesterday. This shows my absolute disdain for what's going on in this world and how biased the media is right now. A woman carrying a three-month-old baby. A woman carrying a three-month-old baby is kicked in the back and then beat in the head by a black teen that wants to steal her cell phone. And then we have the stepfather of Michael Brown standing up on a podium yelling and screaming to burn the town down. Now, people are afraid, afraid, and are cowards not to indict him on inciting mob violence because he's black. Why? Does the color of your skin dictate whether you pay the price for a crime or not? Are we that timid in society that we're so fearful? Oh, we better not do that. Why? They might riot. They might burn. They might loot. Well, we'll just let him go. Reverse the tables. And if a white person jumps up on top of a car and says, burn, and I'm not going to use all the verbiage, this town down, that dude is on his way in handcuffs to a 12 by 12 cell. This is ludicrous. And when I, these are just a few of the stories that are coming through on this. Why are we so afraid to confront race in this country 
and call it what it is and try to settle the problems. I just don't understand this. Oh, we can't do that. We've got to handle it with kid gloves. Oh, don't say that. Oh, no, no, you might incite problems. You know what I'm going to do? And I have no idea if he's going to consent to this, but I think he will. My weatherman is a black man, Michael Rogers. You know that. I don't run from anything, and he doesn't either. I'm going to get him on the air. We're going to talk about this problem, and I want to listen to what he has to say. I want to listen to what he has to say about this and why we as white people are we're the cowards because we're not pursuing what should be done to solve problems that guy that stood up on the car Michael uh, Brown's stepfather should be arrested I don't care if he's purple should be arrested your thoughts 436-2244-1866-927-4587 we are cowards Denny's Restaurant, 611 Overland in Burley. It's the home of Zeb's Lunch Bunch. And next Thursday, the 11th, and we're going to, the start time next Thursday, the 11th, is going to be 11.45. Give me a few extra minutes after the remote broadcast over to Valleywide to get there. Okay, we're going to start 11.45, just 15 minutes later. Uh, Denny's Restaurant, 611 Overland in Burley. And I'll tell you what, the food is phenomenal. Whether you're there for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, all the people take care of you. Great service. What a a menu. What a menu. You're going to love it. And tomorrow is a special day. You know what it is? I'm going to have a question at about 9-11 tomorrow morning. And if you answer the question, you'll win a certificate to go to Denny's Restaurant in Twin Falls on Poline or the one in Burley on Overland and build your own Grand Slam breakfast. Free! Wow! You better be listening. Denny's Restaurant in Twin Falls and Burley. Really nice people. All right. Right, give us a call, 436-224-1866-927-4587. Don't, don't uh, chicken out on me. Give me a call. Let me know your thoughts about what's going on in this world that we can't announce on the news what is going on, who's the perpetrator. <gasps> oh, can't do that because we might offend someone of color. All right, don't forget, Merry Christmas from Western Ways, Twin Falls and Jerome. And they'd like to thank everybody for the support they've given them, Western Ways, over the past year. And they wish you a very Merry Christmas. Call them, 734-6969. Dot Foods, 1541 West 27th Street in Burley, 6786063. Hey, they're hiring drivers. You better believe it. And their drivers really are, they're good. They go by my place. They are very, very good. Great pay, great benefits. And uh, what? company nice people dot foods wishing you and yours a very merry christmas along with the minicasha chamber of commerce 1177 7th street in hayburn and k and the crew we say thank you very much they've got a great visitor center and very unique gift shop at the minicasha chamber of commerce wishing you and yours merry christmas all right come on now Give me a call, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. like to hear what your thoughts are on uh, race and problems. And I'm talking about problems. Did you hear who Obama appointed to be the ambassador to Hungary? <laughs> oh, my I can't believe this. You know, Obama has tried over his six years to rub elbows in Hollywood to kind of make it up with the big timers, the tinsel towners. Well, so he appoints to ambassadorship of Hungary. And this is a very important position. It's not a country of minuscule value. It's right over there where Putin is trying to take over a lot of uh, power for Russia. He appoints a producer, a female producer of a soap opera on television. She has no experience, no knowledge. They asked her questions at the hearing yesterday, and she didn't speak the language. She didn't know anything about the area. My gosh! This is really stupid. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Deb. Hey, I just wanted to uh, throw in my two cents worth about the Ferguson mess. Yeah, please. And it is, it is a mess. But, you know, I, I really believe that a lot of these people really don't care about Mike Brown. He's just being used. This deals with an overall agenda. 
that deals with money and power, and that's what this comes down to, is uh, increasing access to money and uh, gaining more power. Um, Mike Brown's just being used. He's just a pawn in the whole game. I'm going to go one step further, and you can agree or disagree with me, okay? I'm going to go one step further and say that for the people that want to play the race card and the people that don't want to follow the law and the people that want to be like the Al Sharpton's mini-mobs, it's an outlet using Michael Brown and the shooting. It's an outlet for thuggery. And it's an outlet to do whatever they want and basically not get charged for it because we, as the white race in this country, in an area where now blacks are only 13% of the population, whites are 63 64%, we're afraid to confront them because we're afraid we're going to have another Watts riot. I, I, I agree with that. Uh, there's a lot of useful idiots out there, and a lot of these people are low information people, and they they hear the slogans. Uh, you mentioned one, a noose. Um, you know, Jesse Jackson using that term. They throw that out there, and they whip these people up, and they don't have any real information. They don't have a basis to make a intelligent decision. They're just fed this uh, crap from the media and from certain race baiters, and uh, they grab hold of it and go nuts, and uh, they're just being used. Let me ask you a quick question, and then I've got to do a commercial break before my crapo comes on. Do you live in Burley or out in the area? What, where do you live? Burley. Okay. Let's just say that tomorrow night you got mad at the world and you were unhappy about everything and you jumped up on a car in Burley and you said, Burn this town down! Burn this town down! And you were inciting a riot. How long do you think you'd be able to do that? If people actually went out and started burning the town down, I would expect I'd get shot. You'd expect to get arrested for inciting a mob riot, wouldn't you? Yep. And we are cowards to go after Michael Brown's stepfather because we're afraid of the repercussions it might cause. That is lunacy. We believe in justice for all, and that's what people are missing in this whole thing. Um, there should be justice for the police officer. Uh, he went through the grand jury process. He receives his justice. There's justice for Mike Brown. Um, his actions were not exonerated, and uh, people need to accept the justice system Amen. as it is but uh, justice for all and that's what happened in this case and people just aren't willing to accept it I, I could not have said it any better sir God bless you and Merry Christmas to you have a good Christmas. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thanks. Appreciate that. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, i got to do some commercials here, and then we got to get ready for uh, Senator Crapo coming in here. I want to remind you, too, about our friends at Qualys Electronics. Holy smokes, have they got some low prices for you to help celebrate Christmas and treat yourself. A 46-inch smart TV, now only $429. And you'll save $300 on the top-selling 65-inch smart TV, now only $999. Holy cat! Fish, you better get in there. Low prices like a Samsung 32-inch LED for just $199. Wow! Bruce and Steve and the rest of the crew at Qualys Electronics, they're saying, hurry, hurry, hurry. Get in there to Qualys Electronics, 1730 Kimberly Road in Twin Falls. Gina, I've got to get the Capitol Press on here real quick, and I appreciate it. And caller, I'm going to ask your indulgence to stay on the line with us. I'll get to you as quick as I can. Right now, the Capitol Press Ag Minute is brought to everybody by Pacific. Pacific Steel and Recycling, 320 West Main in Burley, helping people with helping hands. That's right. Bring in canned or non-perishable food items. You can get $10 more per ton for scrap iron, $0.05 bonus on aluminum. They want to help the community. They want to help everybody. Pacific Steel and Recycling. Here now, the Capital Press Ag Minute. The Capital Press Ag Minute is brought to you by OnlyAg.com. The U.S. has bought some time for its embattled country of origin meat labeling regulation by appealing the World Trade Organization's second ruling that the program is unfair to Canada and Mexico. American diplomats this spring will seek to rebuke the world body's October 20th ruling that the labeling rules gave an unfair advantage to U.S. livestock by forcing meat packers to segregate and keep detailed records on imported livestock at an added cost. The U.S. had revised its rule in 2013 
after the WTO determined that the original rule was discriminatory without adequately informing American consumers about the origin of food. The WTO's initial ruling was upheld on appeal. This is Hannah Browse. To receive instant, exclusive, unlimited access to the West Agricultural News Source, register your account today at CapitalPress.com. Oh, thank you very much. Brought to you by Pacific Steel and Recycling, helping the community at 320 West Main Street in Burley. Really good folks. Uh, let's see. Gina, who do we have on the line waiting for us? Rotten. Ah, okay, real quick, Dal, go ahead, and then I've got Mike Crapo calling in. I want to know, is white a color? I, well, it's it's a color of a race, Caucasian race. Well, so w- what's your point, Dal? Well, they refer to these people of color. Ain't white a color? Yeah, well, I guess so, yeah. Okay, I accept that. Okay, that's all I was asking. Okay, I guess we are a color. We're we're colored folk too. Okay, I'll I accept that. Thanks, Gal. Okay, appreciate it. Oh, uh, he's got a point. Uh, Gary Shoresman, don't forget his great books, and I mean great books. He gave me some books, and he is an excellent historical author of this area. Fantastic books for the history buff. Great keepsakes for generations, and I'm not saying that lightly. He he has put blood, sweat, and tears into these books, and they are phenomenal. Check out Gary Shoresman's historical review of this area, like with the uh, Arid Acres, a historical review of Kamima and Minidoka Homesteaders, and many other books, all available for Christmas presents at the Bookstore on the Square and the Minidoka County Museum. Excellent gift-giving ideas. Don't let this pass. Don't let this pass. They'll be treasured forever. Gary Shoresman's books on sale at the Bookstore in Rupert and Minidoka County. Museum. All right, give me a call, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. I am expecting that call from uh, United States Senator Mike Crapo. And uh, we're kind of in limbo here due to the fact that I don't know if he got called to the Senate floor. I don't know if he's making the call to get on our program. But we're going to continue on. So give me a call, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. I don't know how many of you happened to catch the Director of Homeland Security. And his name is Jay Johnson. And I I know Al and many other news buffs that just sit and watch the news and study the news and can absolutely uh, recite chapter and verse about what's going on in the news. They are going to agree with me on this. This man, Jay Johnson, Director of Homeland Security, is one of the most smug, egotistical, and arrogant people I have ever seen in any political position. Absolutely smug, egotistical, and arrogant. I have never seen a person show so much disdain when he's sitting at a Senate hearing to answer the questions and give the answers in detail so that people can understand not only the uh, the question and the answer, but also the synopsis of what's going on. He won't do it. And... I absolutely, I I would like to have the opportunity, I know this is just a dream and wishful thinking, to line up across from him on a football field, one-on-one, and just smack him down. This guy is such an arrogant, egotistical person, and doesn't have the knowledge. They asked him questions specifically about some terrorists and where they were, what had happened to them. He has kind of a poof-a-foo attitude where, well, it doesn't make any difference. It's not that important, and who cares attitude. Ladies and gentlemen, he is a representative of We the People. And he's supposed to be giving any and all information about homeland security. And anybody that watches this man at a Senate hearing or being interviewed, he hasn't got a clue. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Well, good morning, Mr. Bell. You know, I totally agree with you. This whole administration is corrupt. They're clueless. And if we don't, if if Congress and, and Senate doesn't take a stand and say, you know what, enough is enough, we are going to be sunk. And on another note, 
I am sick and flipping tired of them making Michael Brown the victim. You know, Donna, right? It's terrible. It's terrible that a young man lost his life, but that was his choice. That's right. That's right. And I am sick of them, the government, interfering with police work. You know, we have um, heroes right here at home, Jeb. They put their lives on the line every day they put that badge on. They go out, they do the best they can, and when somebody threatens you, are you going to stand there and let them take you out? No, and and let me just jump in here, Donna, and say this, that uh, with the grand jury findings and the policeman and what he did and how this thing all unfolded, Folded. Uh, nobody, nobody is talking about uh, Officer Wilson's future. Nobody's talking about his wife and family. Nobody's talking about how he had to resign from the police force. Nobody's talking about all the death threats on him and his family and other members of the police force. Nobody's talking about where this guy is possibly ever going to get employment. He can't stay in the police field. He can never have a job doing that again, for which he studied for work to be a professional he, his life is shattered and torn and thrown away well that's that's kind of what I was alluding to you know this young man should be in, in the happiest part time of his life right now he's getting ready to have another baby and they have to worry about, he has to worry about his whole family staying alive he can't he, wrong what they've done and they would have done it the rioters the, the pokes and the thugs that are out there destroying people's lives, they get away with, with murder, actually, because they're murdering people's lives. I just, he can't go to have an ice cream cone. He can't go to the drugstore. He can't stop in at a little fast food restaurant. He can't do anything. Right now, he is a marked man. And what did he do wrong? Nothing. According to the grand jury findings, and if we don't have enough respect for the law, and we don't have enough respect for these private individuals, American citizens, to garner the evidence and talk to all the people to get the evidence, what kind of a society have we become? that we're scared because we might upset a group of people. Well, I'm, I, I, I totally agree with you. Yeah, you know, it, 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 nobody knows the whole story because we weren't there. But there have been reports that five to ten minutes before he encountered Michael Brown, he was saving a toddler. Yeah, he was. Life. That's a true story. Toddler's Life. That's true story. He left uh, that call and uh, yes. voluntarily, by the way, I want to say this word voluntarily, he did not yes. have to accept this call to go and uh, there was a call on his police radio that said we have a subject, two subjects walking down the middle of the road, they're a traffic hazard, and he went and mm -hmm. investigated and he was just performing his duty. And I'll tell you something right now, and if anybody out there is offended by this, that's your problem, not mine. If, if a police officer is accosted in his vehicle and he knows he's going to suffer physical damage, how much is too much before you say to yourself, you know, this kid or this person is trying to injure and or kill me. He pulled a service revolver and it went off in the vehicle. This man, Michael Brown, tried to take it away from him and don't think for five minutes he would have taken the gun away without using it on the officer. Oh, he, he, I, I, I can almost take to the bank that he would have ended the, this young man's life. Um, and, and, you know, the, the thing that really upsets me the most is these thugs and punks, no matter what the grand jury would have brought down, no matter what had transpired, they would still be doing the same thing they're doing. And they need to take the Jesse Jacksons and the corrupt and disgusting Al Sharpton, put a cork in there, you know where, and ship them over to Afghanistan. Well, I, I've just had so uh, much of a uh, ill feeling towards these people. I mean, I can sit down normally with a lot of people that I disagree with, and I can ask them questions and find out their viewpoint, and I can prove that they're wrong in their thinking. But, but, these people are beyond reproach. Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson are just nothing more than race baiter haters, and that's how they make their living. And, and definitely, and you know what? To, ha to have him sit across in that meeting yesterday, I just wanted to reach through the TV and just put my hands 
around Barack Obama's neck. Well, let's not go there. Let's not go there, Donna, because that uh, can get you in a lot of trouble for saying a threat to the president. So don't go there. You no. better back off on that one. All right. Don't appreciate you. It. I appreciate your call. Thank you. Yep, All right, take care. Bye bye. Uh, calls welcome four three six two two four four one eight six six nine two seven four five eight seven. I do not have a clue what happened to our senator, but uh, my wife is checking right now. She's calling the office in D.C. and finding out why. I was told he'd be on the air promptly at eight thirty, and he's not. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, twelve sixty three Bennett Avenue, Suite two, right behind Doctor Crane's office, with Nick Greenwell heading things up with a staff that is so talented and so dedicated to helping you feel better and helping you get back to being you. They know all the exercises. They know all about sports medicine. They've got the only hydrotherapy pool in the area, and believe me, these people can help you feel better. Stop in. Talk to them. Give them a call for an appointment, 678-1191. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. Thank you very much. Uh, calls welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. And also, Sophie's Chatterbox. Let's not forget about Sophie. What a great bakery they've got over there. Wedding cakes, cookie bars, homemade bread, delicious cinnamon rolls. Matter of fact, we're going to have a whole bunch of Sophie's cinnamon rolls over at Valley White Home and Ranch next Thursday. You better get there early, and they're going to be free. Yes. Sophie's Chatterbox, 530 East Street on the Square in Rupert. You stop in and see those great folks today. All right, give us a call, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Give me a jingle. Um, I almost feel pity for atheists. Almost. Almost. They have nothing. You ever think about that? They have nothing. They, they have no realization of any faith. They have no realization of uh, their sins being forgiven and a better life for eternity. They have nothing. That's a cold pill to swallow. Nothing. When you're dead, you're dead, gone. Worms, that's it. What a cold thing. But they, the atheists to which I will continually run them down because I don't respect them, they're trying to shut down everything for us that are faith-based. Yeah. They've put up billboards and everything, and they got a new one, standby caller. I'll be right there. They've got a brand-new billboard going up now across the country. It shows a little girl writing a note to Santa, and she says, All I want for Christmas is to skip church. I'm too old for fairy tales. Isn't that disgusting and despicable? And like I said, I almost feel pity for atheists. Call her. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. Mr. Wynn and them. Yes, sir. Go ahead quickly. Uh, well, I'm listening uh, to all the... Uh Thing you're saying about black people are doing all this stuff and not being punished, but you didn't mention the guy that uh, three black kids killed with a hammer yesterday. Well, listen, I didn't hit every story. I did say, if you were listening close, I said that there are many more stories, but I didn't have time to get into them. It was disgusting how they treated this person. But you very seldom ever hear those stories because we, as whites, Caucasians, are afraid in the news media and also politically to say anything that, oh, why, it might upset them. They might loot, burn, and pillage. <laughs> You know, I saw a riot in China yesterday, somewhere in China, and we need to break up the riots here, yeah. the way they do. Yeah, <laughs> I, I agree with you. I think we've got to have a show of force and we've got to have a show of justice and be fair to any and all that go into the court system. But you know, this absolute attitude of whitey's not fair, the grand jury was a stacked deck of cards, a hangman's news, they're playing the race card. We're not. 
Thank you, sir. Appreciate yeah. it. Merry Christmas to you. Um, Merry Christmas. I don't know what happened to Mike Crapo. I don't. I mean, I apologize because I was told he would be on the program with us. But right now we're going to have the weather forecast with Michael Rogers Weather, and it is brought to everybody by Mad River Laser, 502 E Street in Rupert, Nicole and her whole crew. I uh, She just told me yesterday that my Christmas ornaments that we ordered that are wooden Christmas ornaments, they're beautiful, are all done. I can't wait to get over there and see them. Deanne's really excited. You better check it out. Get in there today at 502 E Street in Rupert. Engraving on mugs and t-shirts and plaques and everything. She does a wonderful job. Absolutely the best. Nicole at Mad River Laser. And right now here is Michael Rogers' weather. Hello, everyone. Michael Rogers from Zeb of the Ranch. They get rain in the forecast, and the question is how long is it going to be? When is it going to stop? When is the weather going to get nicer? I'm glad you asked that question. Should carry throughout much of the day and also for tonight. Taper off tomorrow night, Thursday night, Friday. Nice and sunny as you work right toward the weekend. Temperatures will stay pretty much in the 50s for the daytime high and the uh, 30s for the all night low. Enjoy the weather. It's the only weather you've got. All right, there you go. Thank you, Michael Rogers Weather, brought to you by Mad River Laser. I love everything she does right there at that business. You will, too. 502 E Street in Rupert. Give us a call, 436-5... This is crazy. 436-2244. There's Zeb. 15 years, and all of a sudden the number just went right through my skull. One eight six six nine two seven four five eight seven. Give us a jingle on the landline, please. I'd like to hear your opinion. Um, we were talking about these atheists and how they're trying to spoil Christmas. Uh, and, and, and a psychologist talked to a bunch of atheists and asked them why they wanted to destroy Christmas for believers and destroy the the giving and the the sense of uh, happiness at that particular time of the world. And the atheists said that, quote, they felt alienated. What? They felt alienated. Well, you don't have to be alienated. All you have to do is come to church with us and you might feel included. Included. Open up your mind. It might be a new experience. And thank the good Lord for all the blessings that you have. Oh, wow. Then you'd really be included. But to go out and try to destroy Christmas. You know, this is one of my pet peeves. And I got into this a long time before Bill O'Reilly and some of these other uh, uh, show poodles decided to jump on board. But... You don't want to mess with Christmas with me around, because I'll guarantee you I will fight until my last breath. Christmas is a very special time of the year. Christmas means so much to me and my family, and my family that's no longer here on this earth. And the memories, the celebrations, and the food, and the family gatherings, and the, the nativity scenes under the tree. All of that means so much. I am not about to sit still and let a group of miscreants try to take it away from me and my family. And it's about time we stood up and said, enough is enough. Enough is enough. Calls welcome, 436 227 4587 Showcase, 2611 Overland and Burley. Oh, Guy and the rest of the crew, my goodness, this weekend they're calling Friday and Saturday. Soup! Friday and Saturday, and uh, you can obtain a free vacation voucher with a purchase of over 699 bucks. many locations to choose from. Holy cow, they've got all your appliances, a mana, whirlpool, and Maytag, and 12 months, same as cash, on approved credit. You'd better get in today to Redder Showcase, 2611 Overland Avenue in Burley, or give them a call at 878-2000. That's right, Redder Showcase, serving you. Uh, I have no idea. Gina, we never did hear from Senator Crapo's office, huh? No, never called in. 
You know, th this is the frustrating part of live radio. You plan on it, you're told they're going to be there, and then all of a sudden they're not. So I guess. Yeah, then uh, no phone call. Maybe he got busy in the chambers, though, so we can't hark on him too bad, but it's kind of a bummer. I, I'm. I know you had a lot of things to talk to him about. Oh, I did. I had about uh, nine or ten questions, time permitting, to get into and everything. But my point is, and, and this is one of the things that I know you're going to agree with me on, in, in the radio business or television business, if a promise is made that someone's going to be there, at least if something comes up and there are things that come up in life every day, every day, all you have to do is make a call and say, I'm yeah. sorry, we can't make it. Exactly. It yeah. Just give us a little bit of a heads up so yep. we can plan, go with plan B. Yeah. And I can guarantee you during the break at 9 o'clock, I will find out why he wasn't on. Okay. All right. Um, also, this is something that's very interesting to me, and I think it should be demanded here in the state of Idaho. Uh, our closest neighbor to the south, Utah, is doing this. South Dakota is doing this. And I think there's about five or six other states that are now changing over to this educational requirement. Seven states, to my knowledge, are telling students that if you want to graduate, you got to pass an American civics test. you got to be able to tell who the president and vice president are. You've got to be able to tell where the nation's capital is. You've got to be able to answer certain questions about our Constitution. What's wrong with that? That's what we had to do when we graduated high school. But what's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. If you're going to be an American citizen, learn your American history. Do you realize, Gina, that there are people that are fighting this and they're saying, oh, they don't have time in the school system for this, and it's just added uh, trivial work for the students. It doesn't really mean anything. I'm outraged over this. It does mean something. When I was a senior in high school, we had to take a U.S. government. And part of U.S. government is, is we had to know uh, the state capital. We had to know who our uh, state legislators uh, were at that particular point in yeah. time in 1990. We had to know all of these things. We had to know how our federal government worked, it, and even on the state level. And so I think that it should be a requirement that uh, high school seniors have to pass this exam. Yeah. Why are we today more than I think ever before in our history so ready and amenable to lessen the standards on anything, not just civics in, in high school, but on anything. Lessen the standards just to let people get along to be along. Does that, you understand what I'm trying to say? I do, and, and it's kind of like uh, making it easier for the next generation. Well, you know, we're not. We're dumbing down the next generation by thinking we're making it easier for them. Yeah, whether it's the law, like what they're doing in Ferguson, Missouri, by not uh, indicting and arresting that stepfather for inciting a mob riot and mob rule. Whether it's something to do with civics in the high school, something that people should know about our great country. Let me ask you, when you go to the polls and vote, you are a very knowledgeable voter. You're a single mom that knows what you want as a constituent of the people that you're trying to elect, and you're cognizant and aware of what their goods and negatives are before you go to the polls. Why should your vote be nullified by a dummy? I don't. I, I feel offended when my vote is nullified by somebody who is uninformed when they go to the polls. I honestly think that everybody should do their homework, you know, because all of the information is out there. All you got to do is look for it uh, and read on your specific candidates or whatever it is that you're going to be voting on. Be informed because the next person that comes along, well, they're just going to, maybe they're just going to vote by, oh, well, I recognize this name. Yeah, and that's there you go. Gonna vote. That's and exactly my point. Way. Yeah, it's, it's nothing but voting by assimilation to maybe, oh, I heard about that guy. He's good. Or I heard about that guy. He likes dogs. I mean, it's the dumbest thing. Thing I ever heard of. Yeah, when I go when I go to the polls, I not only do I do my research, but then I talk to people and get their feel for whatever the candidate or issue may be. You know, so I, yeah. I have a, a bigger picture. We've got a quick phone call. Right, I tell you what, I'll take it right after I do this uh, commercial for our dear okay. friends, our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Center is absolutely the best. All seven locations serving you for the best of wintertime driving. Oh my goodness, yes, all the traction tires, all the pin for studs tires, all. Oh, my goodness, they've got all your tire chains. And are having a little trouble stopping. Maybe the brakes aren't doing what they 
should. They are the best in brake service to you. Best brake value promise in the industry. And, of course, front end alignment, shocks and struts, the best in batteries. Don't be stuck out in the cold. Get the best from your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, John on Poline Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland and Burley, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Caller, I've got exactly one minute left. Go. Yeah, Zeb, how you doing? Good. I, uh, yeah, I, I've been concerned all the way back to that uh, uh, Trayvon Martin thing, you know, when, when Obama sent people down to try to get him for a hate crime, and I'm concerned that, that they start bringing civil cases against these people. Yes. You know, like they're already talking about yep. this police officer, the NAACP and stuff. Right. But wiping him out financially forever. Right. You know, he's, they've got deep pockets, and uh, hopefully some people will, will help him financially when, when all that starts to happen. I'll tell you one thing real quick that I absolutely think is pitiful is that all these uh, federal cases, all these federal innuendos against this officer, and then possibly the civil cases, etc. Officer Wilson's life is a shambles for the rest of his life, and it's now being perpetrated by the government, which I think is absolutely wrong. Barack Obama and Eric Holder should be absolutely ashamed of themselves. Well, I agree, and it's 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 sad, but the double jeopardy thing bothers me. Yeah, absolutely, he's found innocent, so we're going after him anyway, and we're going to wreck him financially. I agree with you, sir. I hate to be rude to you, but you know I got to run to the news, and I do appreciate your call. God bless you, man. Thank you so much, and Merry Christmas to you. Thank you, thank you. Thank nice you. man, right there. Um, I got to run to the news, and uh, while I'm in the news, I'm going to call and find out what happened to United States Senator Mike Crapel. We'll find out, and. And next hour, we've got my dear, dear buddy Doug Johnson from Colorado coming on. Should be really interesting, and we got a lot of questions to ask him. Then coming up later on this morning, we're going to have the, a couple of the gentlemen that are going to be taking over the mall in Burley and restoration of the mall and new business. They've got a lot of great ideas. Don't you go away, Zeb at the Ranch. <laughs> Love that. Isn't that a wintry, kind of a pleasant, uh, kind of a little bit of chill on the end of your nose day type music? I love that music. Thank you very much, Gina. Oh, I tell you, she does a good job over there. Good morning, Zeb at the Ranch. I'm Zeb Bell, and our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations, along with some of our great advertisers, including Lee's Furniture Floors and more at 459 Overland and Burley, and our friends at Western Way Services. From the canyons of the Snake River and the La Crosse. I'll tell you what, Kelly and the crew of Western Way Services have really done a job helping people get rid of their garbage. Absolutely, they are always at your disposal. Don't forget to get on the route service. We've been on it for many, many years, and I'll tell you, you can almost set your watch by these people. They're right there on time. Get in your garbage. It's gone. And don't forget to check out all the dumpsters in various sizes. They take care of you. Always at your disposal, Western Way Services. Call today, 734-6969. Also, I want to say thank you very much to some people that have helped support this program uh, and also my Zeb's Lunch Bunch, and that's, of course, Handsome Mortuary, 710 6th Street in Rupert. The number to call, write this number down, please, very, very important, 436-5636. That number again, 436-5636. Joel Heward, the manager, along with his family, and very flexible hours so they can serve you. That's right. Uh, 
uh, they know that when there's the passing of a loved one, it's just absolutely tumultuous times. And all you have to do is just sit down, take a deep breath, and know that Handsome Mortuary is going to treat you with the highest ethical standards with unquestioned integrity. Please call them today, 436-5636, Handsome Mortuary in Rupert. Holy cow, am I glad to see my old buddy, figuratively speaking, over in Colorado. Good morning, Doug Johnson. How are you? Well, good morning, Zeb. I am good, and as I told Gina, I am still full from Thanksgiving. Uh, we didn't go anywhere. Deanne and I just kind of huddled up here at home, and we had a good old beef roast that she is such an excellent cook. Anyway, I just look forward to that. But uh, we shared in all the thanks and the blessings and everything else, and I'm so glad that you're on the air with us this morning. Let me start off as we're going to kind of shoot this thing in a shotgun approach this morning. First of all, I want to talk about the residual effects that are all negative coming up out of Ferguson, Missouri, with the elongation of this problem and exacerbation of the problem by Barack Obama and Eric Holder and the race baiter haters, Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton, this thing is not going to go away, and I'm afraid we're going to see more repercussions from it. What are your thoughts? Oh, I think we will definitely see more. Uh, you know, we, we have an administration that uh, has promoted this from, from the word go. When the whole thing first started, the White House appoints Al Sharpton as a representative to, to Ferguson, a man who is clearly not only a race baiter but a hater and a man who wants to foment anger and division in America. Then the president um, and, and, and Eric Holder uh, do their part. Eric Holder starts by going and visiting protesters but doesn't even check to see how the police officer who was injured in the whole thing is doing. Uh, and then when the grand jury decision comes out, uh, President Obama says this problem in Ferguson is indicative of problems across the country, not just in that community. My question to that is, what problem? The problem of a, a police officer doing his job and defending himself as he's fighting for his own life from a thug, from a, a criminal? And uh, then add the icing on the cake, Eric Holder coming out and saying, we're not done. The FBI is still investigating this because they're determined to get this guy one way or another. And uh, th this does nothing but divide America. It does, it does nothing but do damage to our country. And that is, of course, what we've talked about for years, Zeb. This is what the goal of this administration is, and they are being very successful at it. Doug, you mentioned Al Sharpton's name in your dissertation just now, and I want to highlight on this. This is one of the most repulsive, one of the most arrogant, one of the most smug, one of the most uh, little wussies that you ever have seen in anyone's life. But he is also one other thing. He is a crook. He's a criminal, and he is an absolute runner from the law. He owes millions and millions of dollars. He's been involved in other shady dealings, and he has total access to the Oval Office as a confidant of Barack Obama. I'll go a step further. He has total access to the Oval Office, the current home of a criminal who's broken the law over 70 times and nobody's held him accountable or gone after him. So, I mean, it's a criminal administration full of criminals who opens the door to more criminals. Uh, they, they open the door to the, to, the, to the illegals with their amnesty. I don't call, you know, illegal is supposedly a bad word. So I call them what they are. These people are criminal immigrant invaders invading our country. So Al Sharpton, these people are being amnestied. Everywhere you turn, this administration surrounds itself and is filled with criminals. We have a caller with a question, and we've got a lot of ground to cover this morning. So, caller, go ahead quickly for Doug Johnson. This is a big, fat question. If the situation was turned around and the black killed the whites, would we hear a word out of it? I'll stand up and I'll say no right up front, loud and clear, and I'll have Doug respond on the air. Thank you. I okay, appreciate it, Alan. Go ahead, Doug. I already voiced my opinion. Yeah, and I'm going to ask you to repeat the question. I couldn't quite hear it. She said if the roles were reversed, and I'm paraphrasing what she said, uh, and it was a black cop killing a white person, I doubt seriously if there would have been even a tenth of the press and publicity. There would have been no press or publicity. We know that for a fact because across this country over recent years, there's been a huge increase in black-on-white crime, 
we rarely, if ever, hear about it, certainly not in the mainstream media, and it's not just the media, because we have to understand that even police departments are refusing to look at race when trying to find a suspect. A good example, the, the, the city of Minneapolis, you know, where you went to school, where I grew up, <clears throat> Minneapolis Police Department does not ask what race a suspect is when there's been a violent attack because it's politically incorrect. This is, this is going on in many police departments across our country. There is a real problem. And while I'm, I'm shifting gears here a little bit on you, Zeb, but while the protesters who Obama opened the Oval Office to to meet with him, which is a whole other discussion, they gave him a list of, of uh, basically demands, uh, most of which were crazy and shouldn't be met. A couple of the things they said actually do make sense. One of, and, and mind you, let me preface this with, I am a big believer in supporting law enforcement because the vast majority of, pe majority of people in our country working in law enforcement are there to protect our communities and do good work. But there are some things that should change, the biggest of which, and this is one of the things they demanded, and I think it's, it's, it's a good thing to demand, is that we take away the militarization of our police because we have, our police have gone to the point now where they don't just have SWAT teams, they have full military armor, they even cover their faces with balaclavas just like ISIS does, um, and, and this kind of stuff needs to stop. But that said, overall this entire situation uh, is only the way it is because of the races involved in the roles they were involved in. Yeah, well wait a minute, Doug. I think you're spot on, but you know, here in the news recently, let me just give you a little sample of where there is no fairness there is no equity, and there is a reversed role here. Uh, college student, this young man was extremely talented. He could play in bands. He was an excellent athlete. He uh, was in New Jersey, and he was headed home in the early evening hours, and a black Muslim walked up to him at a stop sign as he was sitting in his car waiting for the light to change and shot him in the head six times. And then there was, of course, the knockout game which was all across our country. Many, many elderly and many women were knocked out, mostly in the, all the percentages, by black teenagers. Oh, and let's not forget another story I talked about earlier this morning. A woman yesterday was carrying her three-month-old baby to get on the subway. She was kicked in the back and then knocked down and hit, and the black teen that was beating on her wanted nothing more than her cell phone. But these are stories that will not make the news. Well, that's right. And, of course, a couple of weeks ago we talked about a blog post I did about uh, uh, words and phrases are saying now are considered racist. And one of those words was thug, and you and I talked about it, which simply means a, a violent criminal. Uh, but, but nonetheless, they're trying to spin that. And, and the reason I bring that up, Zeb, is because what has happened now is the left is saying <clears throat> that... You can't use certain words. You, you know, you have to give uh, freedom of, of action to these people. You can't scrutinize them. You have to, have to have a different set of rules for them. Now, what's really interesting to me is the way you and I, and I'm sure the vast majority, if not all of your audience, were raised, is if we were doing things like these people are doing, these kind of criminals are doing, our parents, our community leaders would, have, would be standing up and saying, you are bringing shame on your family, on yourself, on your community. Straighten up. But today, that's not done. Today, it's, oh, leave them alone. It's unfair to, to go after them, and, and don't you dare call them what they are. This is how, how absolutely convoluted the logic is in our country today. And this is the abandonment of, of morality I talk about all the time that is killing America. Doug, right now this morning, there's a lot of discussion as to whether or not to indict Michael Brown's stepfather for getting up on the hood of a car and yelling and screaming, burn this blankety-blank town down. And a lot of people are saying, oh, no, oh, no, don't indict him. Why, that will just incite others like him and we'll have more robbing and looting. What in the world? Do you mean to tell me that now because you're going to cause a fuss and you're going to cause a possible mob riot. Oh, no, we can't arrest you because we're scared of you? What's going on in this country? Well, and they can't arrest him because he's black. That's what it really boils down. Bingo. I would be very surprised if they go after him. Um, I, I think they should. They might have the guts to do it. They have the guts to, to uh, uh, not go after uh, Darren Wilson and to, to uh, uh, you know, allow him to uh, uh, basically uh, uh, walk away with a, with a clean record, which he should have. 
but um, political correctness, and, and I'm sure there is huge pressure from the federal government on them not to indict uh, Michael Brown's stepfather, and it's a tragedy because you don't, you know, let's go back to school. When a kid acted up in school, the, the school officials didn't say, well, we better not discipline this kid because it'll cause more kids to act up. Very the school easy. would come down hard on them, and when the, uh, if other students then act up, they come down hard on them. You send the message that we will not tolerate this behavior, and you end the behavior, but but I, I fear they're not going to do that in this case. Doug, I need to take a break for a quick commercial break. Stand by on the phone, if you would, please. Doug Johnson on the air with us from Colorado. Colorado. Merry Christmas wishes from the Sprinkler Shop. Paul Jerome, Buell, and Kimberly Road. The Sprinkler Shop with all your irrigation needs. And they've been serving you since the 1970s. And believe me, their staff wishes you and yours a very Merry Christmas from the Sprinkler Shop. Also, our friends in the Child's World, 1308 Overland and Burley. And if you mention my name, Zeb Bell, you can receive a 25% discount on any item. Hey, you better get in there today. Free gift wrapping and layaway. And don't forget, that's a child's world in Burley. And don't forget, to the bookstore and more at 515 Fifth Street in Rupert. Oh, the best of fudge and all the different flavors. All kinds of Christmas gift-giving ideas, figurines, candles, books, you name it. At the bookstore and more in Rupert. Really, really nice people. Back with Doug Johnson right now. Doug, uh, one of the things I want to talk about this morning is you've already touched on it briefly. But... But uh, yesterday on our program, we talked about it extensively that um, uh, Eric Holder, the Department of Justice and the Attorney General, wants to make it forever clear that there will be no more racial profiling. So I sat there and I thought about this. And like I said, you touched on it a few minutes ago, but if there's a crime committed, a bank is robbed, and let's say that two black guys jump outside the bank and get in a silver pickup and drive away way now he doesn't want it so that it's going to mention anything about their skin color or their race do you realize probably in the city of chicago or minneapolis there are probably right now as we speak at least a million two guys in a pickup that's a silver in color how are you going to find out who the perpetrators of the crime was well, exactly. I mean, it, it's ridiculous. Uh, you know, what else won't we be able to do? Will, will certain type of clothing not be allowed to be yeah. supported? Because, yeah. you know, they, they say, for example, wearing a hoodie is very common yeah. uh, for for uh, for blacks. So if a person is wearing a hoodie, can you not say that? I mean, how do you put out a, a, a report or a warning to the society to watch out and keep on the lookout for people when you can't even say this is a per person of Caucasian or Asian or... or uh, uh, Hispanic or, or you know whatever uh, appearance it, it's ridiculous and uh, it, it weakens law enforcement it raises the chances of more crime and, and makes our neighborhoods uh, less safe and uh, it's nonsense and and to think that the American people are putting up with this is what really shocks me uh, you know Doug in the media and uh, my uh, board operator engineer Gina has been in television news and also radio for a long time like I have I refuse and yesterday I said this on my program, if I know some of the statistics and facts about a case, I am going to mention that it was Hispanics, or it was Caucasians, or it was blacks. I am not going to follow that uh, politically correct uh, diatribe from Eric Holder because I think we're doing communities a disservice, and we're actually causing more lawbreakers to emerge to the surface and wreak havoc on our society. Well, we are, and we also have to remember this is a, an attorney general and a president who support the idea of basically setting up standards where everything has to, to blend with the mixture in society. So, for example, in schools or in, in, in prisons or whatever, everything must have the same ratio racially that our overall society does. So, if, and I don't know what the number is offhand, but if society has... Um, you know, 30% are, are black, then you can have no more than 30% uh, people charged with crimes that are black, and on and on, which is nonsense oh and ridiculous. The question is, we should be going after people who are doing what's wrong and, and fixing those problems, uh, and you do that through accountability. You don't do it through ignoring the crime and saying, well, we're either going to publish or punish more people of another race to equalize it or just reduce the number of people that we actually go after of that race. It's ridiculous, but this, this all 
sets the stage for the, and I use this term loosely, but for the anarchy that is coming, because this is the breakdown of the moral and the legal order of our society. We, we are based on, a, on a, a set of laws, and those are being ignored, and um, uh, that's nothing but failure for, for society. We are doomed if we allow this to happen. Absolutely. Caller, we have another call, and you're on the air. Go ahead quickly. Yeah, uh... Do you think it would make much of a difference if we brought back capital punishment and the good old chain gangs? I'll listen. Uh, you know, that's a really good question. I have always been in favor of not treating these people like they're going to go to the Holiday Inn and uh, be a member of a spa and a resort. What are your thoughts, Doug? Because I just don't think our punishment system is enough. Well, both our punishment and our, our rehabilitation systems fail, uh, fail miserably. And unfortunately, with political correctness, you're not going to see them corrected. Uh, but uh, no, yeah. I, I, number one, um, I'm a big believer in capital punishment. However, I'm very cautious because there have been many people, it's been proven, put to death who were not really guilty, they found out later. So I'm very cautious on making sure we have the right person before we do that. But I'm absolutely for it because the whole purpose of punishment you know, you know, um, punishment for a criminal serves two purposes. One is to, to teach them not to do it again, to teach them they were wrong for their actions and make them accountable. And, and hopefully, if it's a nonviolent crime, they can be re rehabilitated, re-enter society, and become pro productive members of society, which some do. But um, for the other side of that, it's also to be a deterrent. You know, years ago, in the, in the 19th century, you know, they had public hangings. You know, whole families would go and see the public hangings. Today, they wouldn't dare. They, they, they wouldn't dare publicize that. They would not even dare put a picture out. And, and I think what happens is you take away the message to society that this is what happens when you break the law. This, this is why you must behave. This is why you, why you must be a good citizen, be a good person. And I think when you take away that, you lose that deterrent. And so the importance of those things, and, and the call I mentioned chain gangs, there, there again, it's embarrassment, and, and embarrassment is good. When you're a little child um, and, and you act up, the teacher or the parent, when they correct you, more often the child is more embarrassed than anything else, but that embarrassment in front of their peers is a huge factor in that child straightening out their behavior. And it works with adult, adults on a different level, too, so I absolutely think we should do that. Yeah, but Doug, you know, let's use as an analogy right here Michael Brown's stepfather. Go back to that. Here he is jumping up on a vehicle and yelling and screaming to burn Ferguson down. And now with the news media picking up on this and saying, oh, oh, we better be afraid. No, no, we better not indict him. We better not press charges on him for fear. <gasps> Why? Other like him while they'll burn the city and he's sitting there laughing knowing that he beat the law and is not going to have to pay any retribution for what he did well absolutely and it goes even further i'm sure you've seen the videos of stores being broken into and ransacked yeah. and looted yeah. and and i pity the police in ferguson Technically, they should be going and looking at those videos and studying them and seeing who they can identify and get these people, find them, arrest them, prosecute them to the full extent of the law. Absolutely. Examples of them, because once again, this provides not only uh, holding them accountable for their actions, but also a deterrent to society that you don't do this kind of behavior. This behavior, whether it be Michael Brown's father, whether it be the, the looters and burners or the rioters, um, this has nothing to do with Michael Brown. This only has to do with absolute anarchy and uh, uh, actually criminal activity. And, and so the only way you deal with that is you come down hard on it. You know, and, and, and we can lay that at the feet of the governor. The governor calls out the National Guard, then he holds them back and won't let them go do, their, do what they were called to do. And so you have a city burning. And that community has been destroyed now for all the good people there that we're not involved in this, that are victims of what these people have done. That, that community is dead. There is no way people are going to want to live there anymore. They're not going to be seeing new people coming in and new businesses coming in. People are going to be moving out. And that's a tragic, tragic situation that could only be remedied by strong law enforcement. Doug, let me take another little short commercial break, and then I want to come back and talk to you about another subject that's really scary, I think, in the news this morning. Uh, we want to talk quickly about Let's Ride, Highway 24 between Rupert and Burley, where the fun is sold. Oh my goodness, they had a great, successful customer appreciation night. Great time was had by all, and this is a great place. Let's ride to go.
go for your clothing and accessories for motorcycles and ATVs and snowmobiles and check out the 2015 Yamaha snowmobiles all there, all there at Let's Ride Highway 24 between Rupert and Burley and the number to call 436-4771 where the fun is sold. Let's Ride. We're on the air with Doug Johnson and uh, Doug, a story that I just sat back in my geezer chair and when I heard this, I thought, no, no, it can't be. You couldn't possibly uh, put somebody as an appointment to be the ambassador to Hungary, a very important position, and it is awarded to a woman that is a producer of a soap opera on television. Her last name is Bell, and when she sat down in front of the Senate hearing, she can't speak the language. She doesn't know about the customs. She doesn't know about the politics of the country, and Obama appointed her as ambassador. What kind of stupidity is this? Well, sadly, all too often, ambassadorships are awarded to friends and donors of the president and not the people who can seriously do the job, with the exception of a, a few key ambassadorships. But, uh, you know, this is unfortunately what happens. And this administration is all about... Uh, taking care of their friends and punishing anybody who doesn't agree with them. And so, sadly, it's not a surprise, but it's one more example of how they really don't care what happens to America. They really don't care about America's future in the world. Um, Obama is an isolationist, He believe, and he believes that, uh, you know, we just leave them alone, they'll leave us alone, and everything will be fine, and, and we'll just live our lives. And we just, But we need to bring America down a few notches, because... We're too powerful, we're too strong, and we're way, way too prosperous, and we shouldn't be because the rest of the world isn't. Now, I might add, we really aren't prosperous. We're so far in debt. We're the, we're the most um, indebted nation in world history, and we are the most bankrupt. And anybody who says America's a rich nation is foolish. We are not anymore. But nonetheless, he looks at our past and wants to punish us for that. But is there an option to get out of this mess? You know, I listened to this woman, and I thought, my goodness, she is going to be the ambassador to Hungary, which right now is in a target zone from Russia and Putin. She didn't know anything. I don't even think she knows how to send mail to that country. It's not only a joke, but it's very serious, because I think it sends a message to the rest of the world that you don't matter. Oh, it does. It absolutely does. And uh, you ask, is there a way out of it? Well, the way out of it is for our Senate to do their job, and when appointments come up for them to hold firm. But sadly, you have Republican senators like John McCain and Lindsey Graham who say, well, the president has a right to have who he wants in his uh, appointments. So, we, you know, we should just approve his appointments as opposed to doing their job and saying, no, this is a bad person to, to uh, uh, handle whatever position is being appointed and standing up against it. And, and this is why um, I think we should uh, be very concerned about where the Senate is going uh, with these things. I, I don't think the recent election is a sign that things are going to be good because um, there is not a lot of confidence we can have in the establishment control of Republican Party. We must keep the pressure on them because as Senator Jeff Sessions said yesterday about the amnesty issue, he said Republicans are about to break their campaign promises. We don't have a lot of hope they're going to do what, what, what we, what we um, think and what we hope for. Uh, and now I think we're going to see uh, uh, more problems. But back to your question, I think we have to keep pressure on those we've elected to let them know we expect you to make sure only the right people are put in the right positions. This is not about the president's preferences. The president's supposed to be choosing people to do the job best for America, but he doesn't. He does it, chooses the people to do the best thing for him, and yes. that's a big difference. Yes. Doug, uh, another person that I wanted to highlight this morning that in I mentioned this first hour, and I'll stand behind my verbiage. Um, Jay Johnson, the director of Homeland Security, is, in my opinion, the most smug, egotistical, arrogant horse's rear that has ever taken a position in government. He is absolutely a person that is so arrogant that when questions are asked of him about some of the uh, detainees at Gitmo or what's happened to some of the terrorists that have been are released, he basically treats the news media and the senators at the hearing like, hey, it's no big deal. You don't need to know. I'm in charge. This man is repulsive. Well, he is, and, you know, we need to remember that this is the same lawyer. 
he was a Pentagon lawyer before he got in his position now, and he's the same lawyer who, in 2009, in, in, in testimony before Congress, uh, he uh, uh, actually uh, claimed that his bosses had um, uh, intended to imprison anybody they imagined was a terrorist, even after those persons were acquitted of any and all offenses by civilian courts. So, I mean, he, he believes in clearly in dictatorship, totalitarianism. Uh, as far as being the most smug, that's, boy, that's a tough one, Zeb, because, you know, you're run up against Eric Holder and people like that, too. So I, I think we got a, uh, an administration full of people like that. But, but he's terrible, you're right. And uh, uh, he's an embarrassment to America and a danger to America. One last thought here this morning, Doug, and uh, you're a Christian, I'm a Christian, and I'm very, very much offended by the atheists attack on Christianity and especially Christmas. Uh, I don't know if you've had a chance to see the billboards that they are trying to put up nationwide to denigrate Christmas and uh, denigrate Christianity, uh, but the billboard shows a little girl laying on the floor writing a note to Santa Claus, and then the verbiage says very simply, all I want for Christmas is to skip church. I'm too old for fairy tales. And this is paid for by the American Atheist Association. Why? Why are they so afraid? Why are they so backward that they have to hurt everything for everybody else so that we all uh, are in their little shell of nothingness? Well, to answer the question why, you know, it's, I'm not sure we can answer that question. What we do know is that these kind of people um, are, are hard at work to destroy the, the underpinnings, the foundation of America, which, uh, while America is not a Christian nation, that's a whole separate discussion, it's a nation that has always, it was built on Christian uh, values and principles, and uh, has always been a respecter of any religion that people want to practice peacefully. And, um, I mean, we see it here, you know, I, I don't live too far from the Air Force Academy, and uh, they have been under assault by the Freedom From Religion Foundation, and they've had to put up a, uh, uh, a worship area for uh, witches, and they've had to abandon uh, mention of God in so many areas, and, and the list goes on and on and on, and we see this throughout our government, throughout our military, and now we're seeing it in the public, and, and sadly, it's not a surprise, this is the way these people are. Um, of course, Jesus warned us that, that this would happen, but, um, you know, once again, I think this is another area uh, that is a symptom of a greater problem, but we, we need to fight it, we need to stand up. The vast majority of Americans not only uh, celebrate Christmas, but those who, who may not or who aren't Christian still respect it and don't get offended by it. I've, I have many, I've had many, many Jewish friends, for example, over the years that, and every single one of them always will wish me a, a Merry Christmas and uh, are, are very and very appreciative when I wish them the same yeah. because they take it as a, as a nice gesture. They don't take it as offense. So I think these atheists are, uh, who are a tiny minority in our country uh, are getting way too much attention, and uh, you know, we need to ignore them and shun them. And we need to just feel sorry for little children uh, like the girl on the billboard who would actually think that way, that I, uh, all I want for Christmas is not to go to church. That's pretty sad. Now, you turn that around in just, just the same time frame. I don't know if you heard this story, but a little girl was on Disney's page, oh, yeah. a website, and she was supposed to write in things she was thankful for, mm -hmm. and she wrote in friends, family, and God. Yep. And Disney's website said they would not allow her to, to put that on because it was uh, uh, not, not, it says, uh, let's, they, they got a message, we need to be nice. And her mother challenged it, and uh, Disney, you know, danced around the issue. But the fact is that even Disney, who we think is being family friendly, they're blocking the use of the word God. So th this is how bad it's gotten in our society. I agree. But, you know, it was really funny, and I've only got a couple of minutes left here, Doug, but it was not funny, haha, -ha, but very odd that when a psychologist, interviewed some of these atheists as to why they were so against Christmas and Christians, their response was basically that they felt alienated. They felt alone. They felt left out. Well, there's a simple cure for it, Doug. Come to church with me on Christmas Eve. 
Well, you know, you raise an interesting point, and I'll say it quickly because I know you said time's limited, but that's an interesting point. This is where we should learn from this, and we should be extending that invitation. Yeah. Come and spend the holiday with our family and, and love them in as opposed to making them take the effort. Give, make sure they get the invitation. Make sure they know they're welcome. Uh, let them come and see the love and, and, and the warmth, uh, especially at this holiday season. And uh, I bet a lot of them could be won over. And, uh, uh, but, but, you know, as is typical, often people react out of anger. And if people are feeling alienated you know, and, and doing this, they're angry. They're angry they're being left out. So let's turn that around. Let's, let's, make, let's make sure they're, they're welcome and that they know they're welcome. And I think uh, that would help overcome a lot. I couldn't agree more. That's exactly the way I feel. Hey, man, I'll tell you what. How's the weather back there in Colorado? You got a lot of snow? No, no, not at all. Um, we were uh, all through the weekend and through yesterday. We were uh, in the mid fifties to sixty. Uh, today we're a little cooler. Uh, it's dropping down, you know, in the in the forties and some dips into the thirties a little bit. But it's very nice, very mild, and uh, um, you know we've had some snow ever since September. We had a number of snows, but nothing has, has lasted. Well, we want to extend to you as we draw closer and closer to Christmas time the very best of the Yule time spirit and the very best to you and your wife and uh, let me say as we end the program doug johnson merry christmas and thanks for an excellent program this morning i really appreciate it well thank you zeb merry christmas to you, christmas to you and your audience and uh, i look forward to a wonderful holiday season in spite of what's going on in our government because uh, this is a time of year for us to be celebrating the right things and uh uh, I, I think part of that celebration should be making sure all those people who are messing up our government are also known that, uh, or known that they're welcome in our churches and our homes. And, and we want them to see what, what real America is about and what, what our faith is about. Absolutely. Doug, God bless you, man. I'll see you next uh, week on Wednesday. Okay, sounds great. Thank we'll you. Look forward to it. All right. Doug Johnson, dear, dear friend, back in Colorado. I really appreciate him. Holy cow. Let's see. What are we going to do first? Um, well, we better tell everybody about the book plaza with Colonel Dale. Hello, Colonel Dale. How are you? 222 West 11th Street in Burley. Oh, my goodness. Three floors of all your gift giving. Yeah. Books and jewelry and decorating items. Oh, my goodness. You're, there's thousands and thousands of books. You're going to love going in there. And they've got new items for the holidays. Stop in and you're going to love the children's book department that's just been created and the expanded music department oh Whipple's Book Plaza with Colonel Dale Whipple my friend 222 West 11th Street in Burley you stop in and see them today also real quick I want to remind everybody about Lee's Furniture Floors and more oh my I tell you every time I get Brent or I get any one of the Lee family on our program it is really really interesting as to all the different things that they've got going on down there at Lee's Furniture Floors and more at 459 Overland and Burley. I mean, there might be talk one day about the carpet, and they've got rolls and rolls and rolls and rolls of carpet. It might be talk one day about all the mattresses and all the bedroom sets. It might be talk one day about all the recliners and all the different size recliners, because you got to go in and pick one out that fits you. That's right. And they've got all kinds of them for your choice. You stop in today and enjoy the people. The biggest savings, the best values on everything for your home at Lee's Furniture Floors and more. 459 Overland in Burley. Really, really nice people. I have a little opening right now. We had a cancellation uh, this morning early, and that's why we ran Doug Johnson a little bit long. So your calls are welcome and appreciated about any subject you want to talk about this morning. And also, I'm going to get Gina involved in a subject here this morning from the woman's point of view. Gina, are you there? Yep. Okay, yep, yep. She yep. grabs her headset and she says, That doggone Zeb, leave me alone. Um, I want to ask you a simple question as to whether or not you think that President Obama's daughters are not fair game for the media or anyone to criticize. Totally fair game. Aha! That's interesting. I thought maybe you might say the other. Well, here's the deal. Uh, they are the children of the first family, and so therefore, uh, yeah, they are first. Ga they are fair game because that family, by 
choice of their father has been put into the national spotlight. Okay. So, yes, therefore they are fair game. Are you aware of the criticism that's been going around lately in the last couple of weeks? Uh, uh, due to their uh, lack of enthusiasm in one particular uh, setting? Well, it was regarding the day that uh, the president, uh, and I think which is a stupid and frivolous thing to do in the White House, there's many other pressing issues, but he was going to give the Thanksgiving turkey a pardon. Yes. Okay, well, here comes his daughters into the room with all the television cameras and everything else. And I have a picture of how they were dressed, and quite frankly, it is not appropriate for being on national TV. One is dressed as if she was uh, part of a street gang, and the other is dressed as if she was a street walker. And to be honest with you, Elizabeth Lawton, communications director to uh, a Republican senator, I believe, no, Representative Stephen Fincher, pardon me, from Tennessee, she has lost her job because she criticized the way the daughters acted and their demeanor and their dress on national TV. And that's why I'm wondering if you think they're fair game or not. Yes, I do. Th I do think that they're fair game. They have to be uh, putting their best foot and the best image forward, um, and just a little bit more on the conservative side because this is the first family. I'm sorry, but uh, we have to hold them to higher standards. Their parents should be holding them to higher standards. But then again, look at who their parents are. Did you hear what uh, Elizabeth Lawton had written in uh, her uh, basically uh, denouncing the two daughters? If you hadn't, I'll read it to you. Uh, read it to me because I only. Heard snippet. She wrote a little note that was addressed primarily to Sasha and Malia, and she said, quote, Dear Sasha and Malia, I get you're both in those awful teen years, but you're a part of the first family. Try showing a little class. At least respect the part you play. Then again, your mother and father don't respect their positions very much, or the nation for that matter. So I'm guessing you're coming up a little short in the good role model department. I think that's very well said, and I also heard that because of that, she resigned her position. Uh, you might say resigned, but basically she was forced out, and uh, the word fired could be uh, used instead of forced out. You know, um, kudos to her for standing up and saying something. I am rather dismayed that she was kind of forced out of her position and forced to resign. But you know what? They're fair game. Anything that the president of the first family does is fair game. Go back to Hillary and Bill and Chelsea. Whatever they did was fair game. Well, let's go back further. I did a little research on this, and I wanted to show you that as far back as Margaret Truman, as far back as Harry Truman, uh, as far back as George W. Bush with the twin daughters, Jenna and Barbara. They were criticized heavily, if you'll recall. And then, of course, like you mentioned, Hillary and Bill Clinton. I mean, this is not something new, but it is new the way that the uh, Obama machine came down like a hammer on Elizabeth Lawton, and she is no longer a part of politics. You know, uh, it's part of our uh, constitutional rights that we can say what we want to, even if it is against the family. But, you know, she brought up a really interesting point, and, and Dwayne Wickham, Dwayne Wickham writes uh, for various newspapers. Uh, primarily, he is a dean of Morgan State University School of Global Journalism, and he writes for USA Today. He came out and blasted not only Elizabeth Lawton, but he blasted the Republican Party. He blasted conservatives. He blasted any of us as parents that would look at the picture and see how the daughters were dressed and their demeanor during that ceremony, uh, and how dare we criticize the president and his family. <laughs> Isn't that our job? Yeah. yeah. I was just curious. You, I wanted to hear it from the woman's perspective, and also as you being a single mom, uh, I thought maybe you might side with the kids, but you know, really, when you, if you see the picture of the daughters, and then you saw the tape of what was going on and how they acted, their demeanor during that ceremony, it did not depict professionalism and class of the first family. No, and I'm sorry, you're the first family, dress with class, act with class, be class. Absolutely. 
Okay. Oh, by the way, uh, the University of Idaho football team, the Vandals, um, how was their season? I just thought I'd ask. <laughs> I think, what, did we win one? One? I think you did. Yeah, that's I, all I know. I, you know, honestly, I'm a huge Vandal fan, but uh, I've kept myself away from even watching or listening to any Vandal sports because I know I'm just going to get mad. You know, you and Larry Hudig. Larry is absolutely shunned calling my home. Uh, I think he's he's hanging his head in embarrassment because of a one victory season or something. I I haven't heard from him. I'll call and it goes right to tape, and the tape message says, "Is this is Zeb Bell? I'm not here." <laughs> 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 that type of thing. Oh, well. well. You know, we're good sports about it, but uh, we know that uh, our team sucks. <laughs> Let's well, be honest. Gosh, could you be more blunt? <laughs> no. Okay. Hey, I got to get the weather in here. Uh, the weather is brought to everybody this hour by Riverview Urgent Care and Medical Center. What wonderful people and what a wonderful service. Minor emergencies for major care, and they will see you now. They will see you today. They're located at 382 North Overland and Burley, Riverview Urgent Care and Medical Center, and their number to call, of course, 678. 678- Six nine nine six. I'll repeat it. Six seven eight six nine nine six. They can help you. Like I said, they've got all the convenient hours, no appointments necessary. Highly trained staff waiting to serve you at Riverview Urgent Care and Medical Center. Here now, Michael Rogers weather. Hello, everyone. Michael Rogers for Zip of the Ranch. Hey, you're right in the forecast, and the question is how long is it going to be? When is it going to stop? When is the weather going to get nicer? I'm glad you asked that question. Should carry throughout much of the day and also for tonight. Taper off tomorrow night, Thursday night, Friday. Nice and sunny as you work right toward the weekend. Temperatures will stay pretty much in the 50s for the daytime high and in the uh, 30s for the overnight low. Enjoy the weather. It's the only weather you got. Thank you, Michael. Brought to everybody this hour by Riverview Urgent Care and Medical Center. I think these are the nicest people. And, of course, minor emergencies, major care. You call them, 678-6996, Riverview Urgent Care and Medical Center. Calls are welcome and appreciated about anything we've talked about so far this morning and uh, any topic that maybe I haven't talked about this morning. Just give me a jingle on the landline, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Why don't you get in on this audience and uh, what did you think about the criticism of uh, the Obama daughters and how they acted and their demeanor at uh, certain White House events? Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Yes, uh, I was going to ask you if you had seen. I don't know if you watch Boise State football all the time, but some, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. You happened to see the uh, New Mexico game when they just kept running the ball down our throat. And did you see that? Oh yeah, yeah, I watched it. Yeah. And then, the, so we got behind at the New Mexico game, and we kept fighting back and fighting back and fighting back and. And uh, there was a uh, we had we, there was a fourth down, and they went for it in New Mexico, and they didn't get it. And so we got the ball, and we drove the ball down, scored, and won the game. And I think that was a very defining moment for the for the team, and, and it gave them courage, and uh, not uh, not courage, but um, confidence. Mm-hmm. And then they got behind twenty to nothing at. Uh, home against San Diego State and you thought well what's going on here and then they uh, got the ball drove clear the length of the field uh, New, uh, uh, San Diego State uh, Rocky Long is you know a, a defensive guru and and he couldn't stop and drove down scored won the game by 10 points and uh, I think that those were very defining moments for the team and of course we know what happened in uh, Wyoming they came out and lit it up, and I think that even, uh, uh, you know, Utah State, the players and the coach, I think that they were shocked to think that that we were able to do what we did and uh, against them because they're number one defense in the Mountain West, and right. they really thought that, you know, they had some swagger to them, and uh, we came out and played our game, and so... It was it was an interesting you know situation where we were behind against New Mexico and and San Diego State and came back and won and I think it really defined this the, the, it kind of set in stone you know a different 
mentality for the team. I think, uh, and I, of course, uh, I'm not going to brag about following sports, but I think I'm very well uh, versed in what's going on in the world of sports. And we have seen an emergence as uh, Hedrick, one of the top quarterbacks in college football in the nation. We've seen an emergence that Jay Ajayi might be the best running back, not only to have ever played for Boise State, but also may end up being one of the top sought-after professionals. Uh, he is absolutely an outstanding runner and pass receiver. And Boise State University, after a start uh, that possibly a lot of people said killed their season, well, I don't think it was so much that loss to Ole Miss as it was the loss to Air Force. I think people can forgive a loss to Ole Miss, but that loss to Air Force that was totally ridiculous. Other than that, I think Boise State, they're ranked, what, 22nd, 23rd right now in the nation, and they may very well get a bowl bid on New Year's Day. It might be to the Fiesta Bowl. They are playing excellent football, and the coaching staff and the players have really realized their potential, and I think we're going to see a lot of great things in the future. Yeah, I think so, and I think that uh, feeling bad about, uh, now again, I don't remember how many uh, pass interceptions Hendrick threw that day, five, seven. <laughs> he, was, he was the best player for the other team. <laughs> it was, you know, we all thought, you better get rid of this guy. And yeah. then, see, but you see, the coaches know better. And that that's called leadership, see? That's called leadership. Where you say, well, we can't go with public opinion. We've got to go with what we know. And we'll show you that we're right. And then that turned out to be the case. But losing to Air Force, who beat, you know, last week, Colorado State, uh, probably wasn't a good thing and we should have beat them but it turned out that they're pretty pretty scrappy bunch you yeah. know? And so, but I, I, say, I just I got to run and do a commercial break Randy but I want to say kudos to Boise State I want to say kudos to Idaho State Idaho State had one of their better years in a long time so kudos to both of those colleges and universities Randy I got to run but thank you very much See you, All right, buddy. Hey, don't forget, Qualys Electronics, 1730 Kimberly Road in Twin Falls. Don't miss out on the savings. Holy buckets. They've got crazy low prices, like on a Samsung 32-inch LED for just 199 bucks. What? And a, how about this? A 46-inch smart TV, now only 429 Holy smokes. Blu-ray players are just $49. You better stop into Qualys. Save for Christmas at Qualys Electronics, 1730. 30 Kimberly Road in Twin Falls. Hey, by the way, too, don't forget our friends Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 and Rupert. When you think about life insurance and health insurance, retirement planning, employee benefits, yep, yep, they're there. Dean and Todd always serving you very responsive to your needs and very accessible to help you. All you have to do is just call them for an appointment at 436-4424. Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. You be sure and get a hold of them today. Really, really nice people. Hey, again, the Festival of Trees, they're going to have their big gala tonight. And let me get the news note over here. Hold on a minute. i got to get this picked up off the floor. Uh, it starts tonight, I believe it's at 6 p.m. at the Oregon Trail Recreation Center, and uh, they're going to have appetizers and music and a silent auction, tree buying. Tickets are 15 bucks. Everybody try to be there tonight at the Oregon Trail uh, uh what am I saying here? Oregon Trail uh, Center, and that's for the Cashew Festival of Trees. I dropped my note there for a minute. Uh, we're just about ready to go to the news, and I also want to remind you about our friends over at Redder Showcase. My goodness, Guy Redder and the rest of the crew serving you. Don't forget, you can sweeten some deals that you've already made. What do you mean, sweeten some deals? Well, you can go in Redder Showcase, 2611 Overland and Burley, and if you've made a purchase of over $399, you can pull a candy cane off the tree, and you might get an additional discount of 20 to up 
to $100. Holy mackerel. Don't forget the very best of all your appliances, a man, a whirlpool, and Maytag, and 12 months, same as cash on approved credit. Redder Showcase, 2611 Overland and Burley. You stop in and see them today. Really nice folks. Coming up next hour, we are going to have a couple of gentlemen. I believe we have Kip Giles and Matt Darrington that are here, and they're standing out in my kitchen right now, and uh, both of them are trying to show me up because they're so well-dressed. They look like they're on the cover of GQ magazine, as I'm sitting here in a shirt that's got holes in it, and we're going to have them on the air this next hour talking about the renovation of the big mall in Burley. It's going to be really interesting, and these young people have got a great idea as to how to make and bring more business into our area. We'll see you back in six minutes. Uh, good morning. Welcome back. Hour number three, kind of a gray overcast Wednesday, December the 3rd. Zeb at the Ranch. Good morning. Brought to you by our major sponsor, your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, along with some of our great advertisers, and they are Lease Furniture Floors and More at 459 Overland and Burley, and of course our friends at Western Waste Services, always at your disposal. Get on the program, get rid of your garbage, call them at 734-6969. We've got a couple of gentlemen in the studio we're going to be talking to this hour, but first and foremost, let's not forget the Chadwick Sports Grill, 139 West Main and Burley. What's on the menu for a special today? Taco pasta with garlic toast and super salad. That's at the Chadwick. Great environment, super nice people, and the food is always delicious. At the Chadwick Sports Grill, 139 West Main in Burley. You stop in and see them today. Hey, by the way, before we get started, Merry Christmas wishes to go out this morning. And thank you very much to our friends over at Searles 106 North Center in Oakley. My goodness sakes, they've got a laundromat over over there. They've got the gasoline. They've got everything. Specialty baked buns fresh every day for all their sandwiches. Searles serving you and wishing you a Merry Christmas from North Center Street in Oakley. Along with also our friends at Golden Valley Warehouse, 468 West, 1000 South of Burley. And the entire staff would like to thank all of their customers for another great year and they wish you and yours Merry Christmas. As do the friends at Magic Valley Irrigation, 44 East, 500 South of Burley. Don't forget for all your irrigation needs, over 30 years for providing you aluminum pipe repair, and they carry most major brands of repair parts right there at Magic Valley Irrigation, south of Burley. Merry Christmas. Okay, we've got a couple of gentlemen in the studio, and it's an honor to have them here because, uh, first of all, I'd like to salute them for getting involved in a project that I think is going to help the entirety of all of southern Idaho, and we have with us this morning, uh, Matt Darrington and Kip Giles. Good morning, gentlemen. Hold the microphones up real close, if you would. Nice to have you on the show this morning. Morning, Zeb. Nice to have you, Matt. Kip? Good morning, Zeb. Good to have you. Uh, what in the world is the rumor that there is going to be a reopening and a renovation of the old mall in Berlin, and it's going to be called the Rivergate Crossing? Who wants to tell us about this great idea first? Well, I'll start off by saying that we've already undergone the destruction mode, the demol that we like to say, mm -hmm. and we're basically we're going to tear the whole entire thing from the inside out, and we're going to redo the whole inside and basically destructure it as far as an interior mall that you're that goes along with the mall and turn it into more of a strip center with the storefronts accessible from the parking lot. Now, this is interesting because, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the basics of malls has kind of changed over the years. I mean, a lot of them were basically internal, if you will, and then there's been an idea to go back with more outside accessibility. Is that right or wrong? I believe you're correct there, and a lot of the uh, professional shoppers, per se, the women, have, have we've got a really positive response that they like to, if they need something, they like to go in real quick and be able to access it fast and, and then get out of there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where did this idea come from, Matt? I mean, uh, who was the main instigator of the four parties involved in this to say, hey, let's buy this and renovate it? Well, Justin Silcock is one of our partners, um, and Justin is one of the, the founders and the owners of the Denny's in Burley. Mm -hmm. 
and one of my fine sponsors. There we go. There you go. And Justin, um, in that process of of developing that Denny's and purchasing that lot from the from the landowners in New York City, was able to develop a relationship with these guys. And he was the first first person in a long time, or probably ever, that had tried to purchase any land from these guys locally and was successful. Really. And so he was able to buy that lot for the Denny's and develop a relationship with those guys in the meantime and in the process of develop, developing that relationship he was able to get the option to purchase on that property you know the property is absolutely in a prime location I mean I mean it's basically the uh, welcome mat for everybody to drive off the interstate and come into Burley is it not that's correct, and that's kind of behind our name where we, we came up with Rivergate. Yeah. Because you turn off that freeway, and it's the first thing you see when you come in. You Absolutely. Know? And it's just been an eyesore, and like I said, Justin kind of built a relationship, and and I come of an acquaintance with Justin and, and was looking at maybe moving my operation out there to kind of take over that corner because it's, it's the best corner in our town. Yeah. I mean, and so talking with him, he'd already had been buddies with Matt forever and that's kind of how everything just got started. I got to tell you folks that are listening, uh, these are four very sharp individuals. Uh, let me mention the names and if I make a mistake, let me know. Matthew Cook is involved and Justin Silcock, Kip Giles and Matt Darrington. Now Matt, you're a lawyer. I mean, you're a Perry Mason, right? You bet. Okay. And how many years have you been a lawyer? Um, I've been a lawyer since 2008. Really? And uh, what urged you or prompted you to want to get involved in some kind of a project like this? Well, um, number one, it's a, it's a great group of guys that I'm involved with. I mean, you can't beat the team that we put together. They're Absolutely. Fan they're fantastic. Yeah. And so it was an exciting opportunity to do something with those guys. And also, like we discussed, just the nature of the property. Um, it's one of the prime properties in Burley, if not the best property in Burley. And so it was a great opportunity to be involved in. And it's nice to be able to, to diversify a little bit and, and be able to do other things besides just practice law. Well, I tell you, the guy the guy that's sitting next to you, I've known his family for, oh man, this makes me feel old, over 40 years, as a matter of fact. His dad and I used to rope together, and his mom used to be quite a roper too, and then golf kind of came into their lives, didn't it? And uh, Kip, your business, Taco Bandito, I mean, I just commented off the air. I don't think I've ever been by your place to where there's not at least 20, 30 cars waiting to go and have some excellent food. You've done a real good job at that business well appreciate that Zeb and I had good teachers and and taught me a lot and you know my dad was really proud of this area and we've we've grown up here and it's a great community and we really appreciate everybody you know a lot of people uh, might think now you're both locally grown boys aren't you right here what about Matt and uh, Justin again the same they were born and raised here Justin um, graduated from Declo High School same year I did I see he's a local boy and then Matt Cook actually married into a local family he's originally from Texas but he's, he's a local boy anymore let me ask you this question I mean a lot of people today they're saying oh well we're from southern Idaho, there's not a lot of opportunity here, uh, the economy's bad, let's move, let's go to the big city, let's go to Yakima, let's go to Seattle, Portland, Sacramento, whatever the case might be. Why did you guys want to stay here? Well, um, like I said, three of us have our roots here, and we've all established our businesses here. We work here, um, our families here, we believe in the area, we believe in the people that live in this area, and we absolutely believe that there's um, enough demand out there and that the community will support a project like this. Absolutely. And so we're excited to, to be able to do that for the community. Absolutely. Kip, what are your thoughts? I mean, uh, I don't know the entire background of you and what you wanted to do. What were your dreams growing up? I mean, did you want to follow in your dad's footsteps and take over the Taco Bandito? I think as every young man, I, I did follow in my dad's footsteps, you know, growing up under his wing and, you know, and they went along and was roping, like you said, forever and ever, and then golf come into our lives, and, yeah. you know, that took over a lot of things, but they've just been, you know, more like friends, 
and parents. I've just grown up being really good with them. And I moved away for a while and did the big city thing, and it just wasn't for me. I enjoy our small town and, and just the great relationships with these good people. All the glitters is not gold, is it? It's nice to come back home. Now, this is, correct me if I'm wrong, gentlemen, an 80,000-square-foot mall that I believe I read was built back in, what, 1979? Is that correct? That, that's correct. Now, how bad is it? I mean, uh, deterioration with age, uh, is there a lot of work that has to be done out there? You know, we've, we've been through the building a couple of times after big rains and, you know, the fears of what's happening, but it's, it's held up strong. It looks great. You could walk in there and it's like preserved like a museum. Everything looks exactly the way it did when it closed. Really? So what are they doing now to get in preparation? I mean, you're talking about a restoration and a renovation, but basically gutting the interior and starting all over from scratch? Correct. Yep. We've got a crew in there now, and they're basically tearing it down, and it'll just be an empty shell when they're finished. I got a dumb question. How do you know what size to make the offices or the potential uh, uh, business spaces in there? Are they all going to be of uniformity, or what do you do on that? It's actually a great question, um, and that's one of the difficulties that we face right now because right now we're very early in the process. We're going through and we're gathering what we call letters of intent from right. the tenants that want to move in. Right. And so we're in the process of collecting these letters, and each tenant specifies how much square footage they want. And so as we go through the process and collect these letters of intent, we're able to figure out how much square footage is needed for each tenant, and we can start allocating those spaces. But in the meantime, while we're trying to figure out how much square footage needs to be allocated to different tenants, we're going to go ahead and go in and, and tear out the existing walls and, and gut the interior. And then by the time we get that done, um, we'll have a really good idea of what stores are coming in, how much square footage they need, and we'll be able to start demising their space. How do you go about, in you know, this kind of a project, um, I hate to use this word soliciting, but calling, writing, or uh, giving an anticipation that these businesses might be interested in coming into your mall? How do you go about finding out who, what, where, and why? Our first step uh, was to hire a, a broker who that's his background is mm. developing malls and he has he's basically our fingers that reaches out to these people and has been able to there's been huge interest Zeb in our area and that's what's more exciting than everything is the people that are coming out of the woodworks that are just really excited about this project and even our broker that's been all over the state um, is very excited and, and is reassuring that this thing is going to be a huge success. When you talk about the diversity of trying to get a mall like this, how many businesses do you anticipate could be housed in that mall uh, area? Do you have any idea yet? Um, I believe that we're going to have room. It depends, like I said, on square footage requirements of the Hold tenants. Hold a little closer, please. Um, it depends on square footage requirements of the tenants, but we believe that we'll have approximately 8 to 10 stores inside of the mall. Oh. And we also have plans to develop outside of the mall another small strip center in the parking lot and it'll be approximately 6,500 square feet and we guess that we'll probably have four to five stores in it and it's already full of tenants I really mean, we've got that space allocated already now is there an ETA as far as uh, what you said on the calendar everything's going to be done every door is going to be thrown open and come on in world I mean what's the date that you're looking at we uh, can't give any dates um, it's it's difficult process to go through and, and demise the space and gather up these letters of intent and get the tenants sorted out. And so um, we, we are optimistic that we might have some tenants move into there as early as this summer, but we can't give any hard deadlines on when there will be a, a final product over there. I would look at this situation, and this is just purely my opinion. I want both of you to tell me if I'm right or wrong. But you will always have criticism of people saying, oh, gee, another business has come coming in and that's going to hurt the mom and pops, etc. I look at it the other way. I think it creates competition. I think it creates more shopping availability and I think it creates a need for people to stay right in their home area and spend the money locally. Am I right or wrong? I believe you're correct on that and, and in the food business that we're in, we've seen tons of people come and go and you know, it's nice that people have a choice and there's enough I believe to go around and like you said it it, it sparks a fire in people that they Absolutely. have a place to go 
Absolutely. Now, what about, I, I was reading the story in the newspaper about uh, what you have to do and all the different projects that have to be done, but the parking lot itself, uh, kind of a war zone in some places. There's potholes that will swallow a Volkswagen. What are you going to do about that? It's on the top of the priority list. I see. Um, it's a it's a huge parking lot. It's going to take a lot of capital improvement to get that done. A lot of money, um, but that's on the top of our project. There's no way a tenant's going to want to move into a nice new building if that's what the parking situation looks like. And so we have to address it right along with everything else. When it was originally conceptualized to where they were going to put the mall and the parking lot, was it built in the right locations for that property? Um, as far as that parcel is concerned, yeah, I don't think they could have done it any better, I given see. the dynamics of the parcel and the shape of the parcel. And then, Kip, what about the fact that there is right on the front of the property the old JB's building? What's going to happen there? Well, first off, uh, our plans are to level that building and, and hopefully sell that property off to somebody. So it would be a different ownership and a different business there? Correct. I see. But it is currently part of the actual mall property, is that right? Yes, that uh, came as part of the package. Have you had any interest in that so far? We have. We've been contacted by three different individuals with interest in that corner. But I'll tell you what, now, the open-air atmosphere, they'll be able to basically pull right up in front of the store and just walk right inside. And uh, will there also be like a center court area, or is that not going to be a part of it like it used to be? No, there won't be a center court anymore. Like Kip was talking earlier, um, modern society, everybody seems to be so busy. And moms are always in a rush, and everybody's in a hurry. And so everybody likes to be able to pull up in front of the store that they want to go to, and get out and go get the things they need and be able to leave. And each tenant um, has kind of adapted that model, and they like to have their own signage and their own storefront. Absolutely. And so that's what we're looking at doing. There won't be any kind of a center court. Um, it, each store will have their own entryway. It'll be essentially a, a modern strip center like you see in other cities. I've got to take a break for a commercial, and we're on the air right now with Matt Darrington and Kip Giles, and they are two of the four principal parties of the River Gate Crossing. I like that title. Who, who came up with that? Who's the, the brave one that wants to boast about that? The brains behind the operation, Kip. Ah, good for you. I love that name, River Gate Crossing. You know the first thing that came to mind when I saw that title, River Gate Crossing, was the movie The Outlaw Josie Wales when they crossed the river. For some reason that hit me. Remember that when they had to go across on that boat and they had to ferry their horses across and the bad guys were after them? You don't remember that movie? Come on, Kip, help you, me out a little bit. Are you telling your age again? I'm an old man, <laughs> but so is your dad. <laughs> okay. Don't forget Snyder's Surplus. Absolutely wonderful people. Tammy and Leland, the whole crew at 112 South, 200 West of Rupert. They've got everything over there. And when I say everything, I mean everything. And they've got brand new merchandise. They've got a brand new building but with the same friendly service. You stop over if you're looking for a bedroom set or if you're looking for heavy wool blankets and sleeping bags for the hunters. If you're looking for all the wool socks, they've got all kinds of things to entice you to stop over and say hello. Super friendly service at Snyder's Surplus. 112 South, 200 West of Rupert. You stop in and see them today. What, what else do you want people to know about this mall? I mean, what else is there that you want people right now in the Burley... Uh, Rupert area, all of southern Idaho, to know about this mall. Give us uh, kind of the theme of the Rivergate Crossing. The theme? Yeah, what's your theme? What's our theme, Kip? <laughs> <laughs> um, shop local. Uh, hold the mic up. I, I can't hear you. Yeah, it's always better to talk on the radio when you got a microphone, Matt. Go ahead. Um, I'd say the theme for us is shop local and support your local community. And we're excited to be able to, to provide that opportunity in the future. And as we develop this, I think that um, that opportunity will really present itself to the community. Absolutely. Uh, one of the things I read, uh, it will be a gateway to shopping in Burley. And I think you're going to be a big drawing card. I just can't believe uh, that it would ever think of failing. I think with good management like you four and what you've got planned, man, the sky's the limit as to what you can do, Kip. Yeah, we're really excited. And, and you know, we're local people, and we're putting our, our faith and our money back into our community. And yeah. I think that's what it's all about. You know, that we've taken this out of the big city hands and we've put it back into the community. 
What does it do, perhaps, for like uh, employment opportunities and and uh, different businesses coming in? Of course, I know you can't name any businesses that might have committed or whatever, but I'm sure there's a lot of businesses that are going to be looking to get some really good quality local people involved in their business out at that mall. Yeah, that's correct, Zeb. So every store that moves in has the potential of housing, you know, 10 employees. And once we get up and running, we have the potential of having 15 businesses up and running in this at one particular moment. Wow. That's a lot of a lot of help for the community. Now, do each of you, Matt and Justin and Kip and Matt, uh, each of you have a special job that it's your duty to perform as part of your conglomerate? I mean, Kip, you've got one thing to do. Matt, you've got another thing to do. Have you kind of diversified it as to everybody's specialties? We have. As you can imagine, there's a lot of work that has to be done on a project of this scope and so because we have a, a good team we're lucky that we have a good team we're able to divide some of those duties out um, Justin and Kip are heading up our, our construction and um, a lot of our tenant work and Matt and I are in charge of a lot of the things dealing with the contracting and and other things that deal with more um, legal aspects of the of the project. I gotta ask you each one of you were involved in your own job your own livelihood. I mean Matt you're a lawyer and Kip, of course, you run a business that's highly successful, Taco Bandito. Where do you find time for all this? It's fairly easy. I, I, it just makes itself work out, and I've got great people. You know, Mom and Dad have been retired for seven years, and they still show up every day. I'm jealous. They've been retired for seven years? Yes. Wow. You shouldn't be jealous because they still work every day. Yeah. It's, I, I have this dream built up of people that retire and go places, but Mom and Dad are still right there. Oh, my. What about you, Matt? I mean, being a lawyer, it's not easy with court cases and everything to dedicate yourself to this, is it? No, it, it, it requires some some work. Um, I'm very fortunate. I have a wonderful business partner in my law in my law office, Brett Anthon, and I have good office staff. And because I have good support at my at my other job, I can dedicate some time to this. And it's required a significant amount of time. And I think it's the same with with Matt and Justin. They both have good help, um, good people minding the store, and so they're able to get out and dedicate time to this as well. Let me ask you. We got about two or three minutes left here in this half hour, and I know you've got other commitments today. But now, if people that hear this. I don't care if it's on the internet. We're being heard right now in Texas and Florida and all over the country. If people are interested and they want to possibly talk to you about locating a business at this mall, what do they do? Well, they, they get a hold of our broker. Um, we have a broker. He's wonderful. We believe he's the best in the state of Idaho. His name is Brent Wilson. He's based out of Idaho Falls. And I can give you his phone number. His phone number is 208-881-1108. And so if anybody's listening and, and they're interested in the project or interested in some space in the, in the, in the mall, um, get a hold of Brent, and he'll get you lined out and get you taken care of. Well, I absolutely uh, extend to you the very best, and I know here we are getting close to Christmas, and I'll bet you wish that it was opening right now for Christmas season. But uh, I think that you've got a great thing going, and we uh, give you all the kudos for taking the risk and uh, sticking your necks out. And all of you about the same age, I wished I was your age and could have the same opportunity. I applaud you both. Thank you. Thank you, Zeb. We appreciate the opportunity. Um, Matt, any final words on this before we go? No, uh, we appreciate the time, and like we said before, we're, we're very appreciative of the community, and we're excited to be able to um, give back to the community through this project. All right, well, let's see. It's 1030 almost, and that means if Kip drives really, really fast, he's not going to miss out on making any of those burritos or anything, so we're going to let you go. Uh, Matt Darrington and Kip uh, Giles, I want to say thank you very much for coming on the program, and I wish you nothing but success, and Merry Christmas. Folks, the River Gate Crossing, I love that name, uh, gateway to shopping in Burley, and it's going to be renovated and ready to go before too long. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. We're going to send this back over to our main studios right now, and uh, Scotty and, of course, Gina, and we'll be back in about three minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you.
And now, back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. Oh, thank you very much. Welcome back, Zeb at the Ranch, last half hour. I really admire the four gentlemen that I had on the air, two of the gentlemen I had on the air here in the studio, uh, Matt Cook, Justin Silcock, Kip Giles, and Matt Darrington. I admire those four for taking on a project that's going to help the entire community. That's great. The Rivergate Crossing, I'm really glad I had them on the program. Uh, calls are welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. What are you doing here, Jack Oiler? Are you lost? Come on, get on the air with me for a minute. I'll have you sit down, and we, we didn't get a chance to finish some of the things the other day, so I'll have you fill in. You know, this is like a homeless person just walking in. I think he's looking for a free lunch. Jack Oiler just got here. Uh, before I get him on the program, I want to remind everybody, and this is probably Jack Oiler's favorite place to go, Sportsman's Warehouse. I love that story. He's nodding his head. 1940 Bridgeview in Twin Falls. My goodness, all your Christmas shopping for the hunter and the shooter and the archery person and the fisherman and the boater and the people who like ATVs. Oh, it's all there. And they've got at Sportsman's Warehouse, and again, Jack knows this to be true, they've got experts in every department that can help you find exactly what you're looking for. I just go out there to Sportsman's and I just kind of look around, walk around and enjoy. You'll love shopping at Sportsman's Warehouse, 1940 Bridgeview Boulevard in Twin Falls. Really nice people. Also want to remind you, too, about Four Paws Bed and Bath. Yep, you got a doggy and a kitty cat. Well, listen to this. They're going to have their annual Santa party, and it's scheduled for December 13th. Jack, go get your Doberman, and it's going to be from 11 to 3, and uh, you can take pictures of your pets sitting on Santa Claus's lap. He's going to love having all those sharp-clawed kitties on his lap. Uh, great sales throughout the entire store. Spin the wheel for great discounts. All of this along with yummy refreshments for the pets and their families families at Four Paws Bed and Bath, 370 West, 200 South of Rupert, 438-4444. They've got all kinds of goodies out there, too, for your pets, uh, different uh, apparel, collars, leashes, everything at Four Paws Bed and Bath. What are you doing out here? Didn't you remember that you were on the air the other day? What's your What's going on? I'm just on my way home uh, from <laughs> the east. Oh, you're on your way home from the east. Where's yeah. your camel? <laughs> <laughs> um, I got. I'm fading him today. <laughs> I'm in my car. <laughs> uh, Jack, you know, the other day you were on. We were talking about closures, and we were talking about how we're losing our land to use and everything. And you talked a little bit about the white clouds issue. But you know, it's even closer to home than that. As we were talking about what's happening, maybe right up here in the Casha districts of 54 and 55, right. uh, with land closures. Is this happening all over? Over the West, or are we just primarily uh, having it hit Idaho? It's um, through the Endangered Species Act, uh, there's closures all over the United States, and that's where we have been able to make some tracks in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. if, if we could get the president on our side. But, uh, and when when that ride was going to uh, Washington D.C. Yeah, were the uh, the cattlemen out of Nevada? Right. Yeah, and the people in Kansas got on board and really supported that and yeah. sent petitions and everything because uh, under the Endangered Species Act they listed a grouse that lives in Kansas and so. Um, there, there went that that thing. Do you think, Jack, that most people and, and nobody is better qualified to answer this than you are? Because for since 1995, when basically I first met you around that area, and we became friends, and I started helping you not only on the radio but going to some of the meetings and everything about the uh, environmentalists wanting to bring back the wolf, rest, restore the wolf through the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Uh, do you think that people are getting involved enough to let their voices be heard. I, I feel like we've just taken a naive attitude and we're not doing all we can. Uh, no, people aren't getting 
involved like they should to to protect their interests. Yeah. You know, uh, there is so much going on that people could help out to protect their interest down the road. It's like all these closures, everything else. And um, I saw it start years ago up in Island Park, up by my cabin, where the Forest Service started dozing roads in. And uh, it, that's what opened my eyes to what was going on. And I got in, involved and started checking on it. Seeing and doing nothing creates everything falling in on your head, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Well, I've uh, got a call. I'll okay. tell you what, let's take that call. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. <laughs> oh, brother. I just went by your house. <laughs> it, it, this has got to be Al Butler. And I'll tell you what, I don't know whether he stubbed his toe or whether he's trying to imitate a wolf, but that was the sickest <laughs> I ever heard in my life. Hey, Jack, I know what we can do or use Zeb for. What? <laughs> Let's put him on a bulldozer and set him down a trail and say, charge right up over the hill. <laughs> Clean it off. I'd be good at that. I really I would be good at that. I think you would. I could make a complete mess and a fiasco out of the Forest Service bigger mess and fiasco. Right. right because they're not taking care of it like it used to be. I mean, we always took care of our own trails and all that stuff when I was a scout and that. Well, the point is, Al, that uh, all of us are losing the rights to our public lands. And what's happening, and I dare anybody to tell me I'm wrong, what's happening is we're seeing a shifting in thought and philosophy to where if you're not a six-foot-two hiker, backpacker, or bicycle rider, you're stopped from going in and seeing these public lands. Jack, would you agree with that? I totally agree with that. Um, the things that's going on today in the forest up north of Ketchum yeah. is a perfect example. And you know, I was riding over here today, and uh, as soon as I hit the windmills out here and started looking at the eyesores on the hill, yep. um, I got thinking, you know, it depends who you are and where you are as to what happens. And the perfect example of that is a power line that was needed to go into Blaine County a few years ago. This has probably been 15 years ago, maybe 20, but at least 15. And out of that uh, substation up north of uh, Jerome on Highway 93, they went out of that substation, but the people in Wood River Valley said, no, we don't want that power line, that big power line, coming up the highway to distract us with those, all those poles and lines and everything. So you know what they did with that power line? They ran it from there out past Dietrich, clear up to Peekaboo, and then they went up over the mountains north of Peekaboo, and so that the people in um, Wood River Valley wouldn't have to look at the lines. Mm -hmm. And then when they dropped down into the Wood River Valley, they, start, they started putting it underground. Now, there's... You know, it's not what, what's good for the goose is not what's good for the game. That's right. There's <laughs> two trails, yeah, and it yeah. depends on who you are uh, and and how much money you have as to which trail you get to walk I didn't. On. I don't think we said goodbye to the sickest wolf sound I ever heard. <laughs> Al, if you're still there, thank you so much. Uh, I believe he hung up. But, uh, you know, the point is, and you mentioned it the other day, and I want to elaborate on this just a little bit while we do a commercial break here. But people like me that have a physical challenge, that are not hikers, backpackers, or bicyclists, I feel, and tell me if I'm wrong with my feeling, I feel like I'm being excluded as a taxpayer that's paid taxes since he was 16 years of age because of my disability. Am I wrong? No, that's completely right. Um, I, 
I argued that over in Burley years ago with Fred Preston when we went to a meeting on road closures going into the dam over there um, by Hayburn. You know, they they were closing roads where these people would go, older people would yep. go, and they couldn't get down to the lake to fish anymore. Isn't it interesting, though, Jack, that we have today, unfortunately, more racism and charges of discrimination today more than ever before. But when you look at discrimination, it's running rampant against people in our society that are either elderly or physically challenged. And they're basically being told, well, that's tough. You can't go in there. The people that are being discriminated against today live in the West, and I can call it discrimination, or somebody else can call it something else, but we are being discriminated against because of our public lands in the West, and I can give you example after example, and I've even thought this out enough to feel like that we're just like the Indians and that we have been put on reservations in the West. That's a good point. And... Um, you know, well, we've been put on reservations, but uh, to the degree that the Indians probably won't have the revocation of their of their property, as far as the treaties are concerned, there is basically a movement to get rid of you and I from our landscape and ownership of private property. That's right. I mean, it's discrimination in the highest degree. I agree. You know what? We're getting along much too well this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Stand by. i got to do some commercials here real quick. Next Thursday, I want to reiterate that we are going to be over at Valley White Home and Ranch. And, boy, are we going to have a lot of fun at that great big Christmas remote, 910 South Oneida in Rupert. And you can enter the naughty or nice drawing. Ooh, at Valley White Home and Ranch, all you have to do is bring in an unwrapped small gift, put it in the box by the Christmas tree, and your name will be entered for a $100 gift card drawing. Hey, and you can also donate cash and your name will be entered. All of this is going to go on. We're going to have Santa Claus over there. We're going to have music with Ken Mort. It's going to be a lot of fun next Thursday, December 11th at Valley White Home and Ranch. Don't you miss it. Absolutely great. Hey, by the way, you know Gary Shoresman, don't you, Jack? Uh, yes. He is wonderful and what a great author. And he's written so many books. And right now, all of the books that he's written, all of the books are on sale at the bookstore on the square and Rupert and the Minidoka County Museum. These are fantastic books for the history buff. I have some right there. And what keepsakes for generations to come? I mean, for a grandfather to pass down to the son and then that son to his son. Wow. These are history books of this area. You don't want to pass this up. Great Christmas gift giving ideas of Gary Shoresman and his historical books, all at the bookstore on the square in Rupert and the Minidoka County Museum. We've got to do a weather forecast real quick, and the weather is brought to you this hour by Scarrow's Meats. Wonderful people over in Jerome. And let me tell you something, they've got a super idea. If you're having trouble on deciding on a Christmas present for that certain person, order a Christmas box, a gift box, from Scarrow's Meats. Different prices, different types of meats, delicious. You're going to love it. At Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome, 324-7657. Here now is Michael Rogers weather. Hello, everyone. Michael Rogers for Zeb of the Ranch. They get rain in the forecast, and the question is how long is it going to be? When is it going to stop? When is the weather going to get nicer? I'm glad you asked that question. Should carry throughout much of the day and also for tonight. Taper off tomorrow night, Thursday night, Friday. Nice and sunny as you work right toward the weekend. Temperatures will stay pretty much in the 50s for the daytime high and the uh, 30s for the overnight low. Enjoy the weather. It's the only weather you've got. All right, Michael, thank you. And brought to you by Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome, 324-7657. They are selling taste one bite at a time. Jack, what do we do? I mean, 
you and I, and I'm not bragging about you or I, but basically we've been a mouthpiece against what's going on, not only with the wolf reintroduction, but a lot of other things. But you get to the point, don't you? You get sick of fighting. You get sick of getting out of bed in the morning, and, and you look around behind you, and nobody's standing there to help you, and it gets a little depressing after a while, doesn't well, it? Well, it does. And at my age, you know, I think a lot are you, about 39 right now? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Plus two. <laughs> um, I, you know, I think about this a lot, but then I think about the people that I've dealt with over the years. Take the wolf issue and the environmental groups that I've sat around the table with and negotiated with, and uh, whether it be here or whether it be in Washington, D.C., um, I have come to the conclusion that, you know, you can come to an agreement with these people, but an agreement doesn't mean anything to them, and they forget as soon as the doors close to the meeting what that agreement was, and they move on in a different direction, and the... Um, BLM is the same way. They've done the same thing on the sage grouse issue. Wouldn't you agree with me, though, that even though it sounds depressing that there's not a lot of people that want to get involved anymore today, we just recently had uh, a situation in the Burley area where the residents were very unhappy about a garbage relocation right. facility that would have, affected, house. Yeah, would have affected property rights and everything. And they, <laughs> they voiced a uh, stand-up, no, we don't want it here type thing, and it may change the whole complexion of what's being done. I look at this situation with the uh, road closures and closure of land that's public land the same way. I think people have to stand up and they have to voice their opinion. But one thing I will say, and I'm not going to back up on this, it's past time of being ladies and gentlemen and just begging with your hat in your hand. I think we have to make demands and let politicians know in no uncertain terms we're not to be messed with anymore. Am I wrong? No, that's that's why I asked the question the other day. What are our politicians in Washington D.C. doing for us? Not much. I, you know, I just don't see that it, it's happening. You, you know, you're closer to it because of the wolf issue, and you've had nothing but lip service in a lot of occasions to where they just kind of shined you on so you'd shut up and go home. Isn't that true? Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, many times, and um, I had an experience with uh, with our neighbor down here from Nevada, that's head of the Senate right now. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, Harry Harry Reid is a fish. I mean, oh, you had me worried there. That was, <laughs> I have never heard you curse, and when you were going <laughs> that way, I thought this is going to kick me off the air. <laughs> um. We had an experience with him on the wolf issue in Washington, D.C. that I will never forget. Really? Uh, what happened? <laughs> and keep it in eloquent terms. Well, uh, we had been back there working from Sunday through Thursday with politicians in Washington, D.C., getting them on board to delist the wolves. This is way back when it was... Uh, Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming. Right, right. To delist in the three states. Right. And we were, we had the votes. And so we we wanted to get in to see Harry Reid, but we never could. And Harry kept telling us that we didn't, um, he didn't need to see us because there wasn't any wolves in Nevada. Oh. Mm -hmm. So anyway, Thursday night, the guy from Montana says, let's go home. I said, let's go home. We headed for the airport, and um, on the way to the airport, we got a phone call. One of our guys uh, from Utah got a phone call that said, um, would you, uh, Harry will see you at 9 o'clock in the morning, oh. but you have to bring a $25,000 check. This was when Harry was running for re-election. Wait a minute, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. You can see him a, a servant to the people. 
but you have to bring him a $25,000 check? What was this, kind of a gratuity to keep him elected, or what was it for? That's, it was for his election. He, that's when he was getting reelected here a couple of years so ago. So basically, it was blackmail. <laughs> it was. I mean, it's, it's extortion is what I said. He extorted us because <clears throat> we had the votes of the two senator, the two Democratic senators from Montana. At the meeting, Harry agreed that he would vote in our favor. So we thought we had one more vote. And but he, after we left, he calls uh, Bacchus and Tester out of Montana, Montana. and says, yeah. um, uh, "You guys aren't up for." for re-election on this cycle I am and he says uh, if you will change your vote and, and vote no I gotta vote yes because I'm up for re-election and he absolutely asked you and your entourage for a $25,000 donation or you couldn't grace his office that's right we left the check there Unbelievable. But this is the problem. I don't care if it's Barack Obama. I don't care if it's Harry Reid. I don't care if it's John Boehner. I am sick and tired of the politics. I'm sick and tired of them not really caring about you, caring about me, caring about the people that they're supposed to represent. This is not meant for them to go back and become millionaires. No. I, I was... I didn't want to stay overnight anyway again. Yeah. I was sick of Washington, D.C. It doesn't take much, does it? No. No. A couple of nights in Washington are just a long-lived hell. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, I've been there. i got to do a commercial and we'll wrap it up. I'm, I'm glad you stopped in. Of course, you know uh, that this is home for the wayward Jack Oiler, so that's fine. Hey, don't forget your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations. And if you're not ready for wintertime driving, you should be. They've got all the traction tires. They've got all the tires that are pinned for studs. They've got all your tire chains. And they've got the knowledge as to what kind of tires are going to do the best job for you. Oh, by the way, have you had your battery checked? Mm, cold mornings. You better make sure you've got a battery that's going to start that four-wheel wonder. And if you don't, you better get in there and get a brand new battery. And the best in brake service, too. Absolutely. They care. They care about your safety. They care about your safe driving at your mat. Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, John on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland and Burley, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Jack, uh, there's so many issues right now that basically you could put under the banner of Agenda 21, whether it's the wolf recovery, whether it's the sage grouse issue, whether it's the uh, uh, the problems in California with the little bitty smelt going through their screens and shutting down their irrigation. There's no regard for humans. There's no regards for agriculture, and there's no regard for people living off the land anymore, is there? No, there isn't, and it's been that way for a long time, and that's why I feel so bad that we lost the guy that was fighting for that. I mean, Grant Gerber, Grant Gerber um, did the shovel brigade out here, and he in Oregon when they shut that water off, he did the bucket brigade. That's right. Um, you know. Who is going to stand up? It takes people to stand up and do something. I don't think that any of us uh, in the listening audience really appreciated what Grant Gerber stood for down in Elko, Nevada, and what he really was involved in, unfortunately, until after his passing. And uh, we had talked the other day on the program about him uh, and the possibility that maybe his son will follow and pick up the briefcase uh, and, and follow in his dad's footsteps. Is there a chance that might happen? Um, his son has nine kids. And, oh, boy. Uh, I don't see it happening right now. He hasn't had time to open that briefcase yet yeah. as, a, as of a week ago when I was down there. But um, I've tried to encourage it, and, and I've tried to encourage some of the 
the county commissioners to get involved. Uh, but, uh, you know, They're I don't know. It goes back to do they understand or do they know? Do they understand that if the sage grouse is listed, it could be devastating not only for the rural areas, but also for the communities? It might even shut down and l basically lock up a lot of smaller communities, will it not? It, uh, Elko County knows that, and Elko County is very aware of what's going on. Scary times, Jack, and yes. people need to get involved. I mean, we're looking at a lack of leadership for the American public with the Obama administration, and we're looking at a lack of security. We're looking at a lack of appreciation for agriculture. We're looking at a lack of appreciation for uh, human decency with their jobs, etc. Uh, we better do something to be vocal and make sure that we hold the feet of our congressmen and our senators right to the fire. That's right. Absolutely. I mean, um, that's why my question, what are the people in Washington, D.C. doing for us? Amen. Jack, I thank you for stopping by. You know that uh, you're always welcome to let that car swing in the driveway and just come on in. And God's blessings to you. And I'm sure that you'll stop in again someday before Christmas, especially when Deanne's baking. I know. You've got radar for food. Do we have anything to eat today? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, Jack Oiler, a dear friend, thank you for coming on the program. Uh, tomorrow, Thursday on the program. We've got a lot of people that are scheduled to be on our show including uh, quite a few national authors that I'm looking forward to visiting with and uh, along with our stable of friends that come on every Thursday. And we'll start at 8.06. 8.06 to 11. Zeb at the Ranch right here on KBAR 1230 and streaming live all over the universe on ZebBell.com. Thanks Gina. Great job. Have a wonderful day the way things were, the way things ought to be. We'll see you tomorrow morning.